Jeff, Deb, and Pre Williams of Eck Real Estate, PT Associates of Emporia, Charlie's Place, and Colmar Concrete. Hornet Football also brought to you by Bruff Sports Bar and Grill, Express Tire and Auto, Gerald Schumann Electric, Mark II Lumber, Line Auto Supply, Mel's Tire, Farm Bureau Agent Brian Fillinger, Williams Automotive, Subway, the Orthopedic and Sports Medicine Center in Manhattan, Candlewood Suites, Gambino's Pizza, and Next Tech Wireless. Now, stay tuned. Uh, this was a big game. I mean, we were at a critical point in our season here. We were setting at two and three. Had lost uh, our last home game that we had played there. We had lost to Lindenwood. That was a, that was a tough loss. Tough loss. Um, felt like we didn't finish the game uh, in that in that previous game against Lindenwood. So here we are, setting at two and three against the defending MIAA champs, Four Days. I think they're four and one at the time. Uh, we are at home and. One thing that I will say is that this group that we had uh, this year, this this year here, 2018, was a veteran group, and I think their veteran leadership showed through uh, in this game, uh, kind of how we came back and, and uh, won the game. Kind of really kicked off a, a run for us that led us to the course of Cannibal uh, victory and a, and a finish on the season. Reed, what are your keys uh, to victory this afternoon? With, with I think we were eight and, uh, eight and four. Yeah. He's playing really well right now, and I think he needs guys that are gonna that are gonna help him out. Um, so catch the ball and make plays on the perimeter. Number two, um, not losing track of guys in the secondary. That's been you know a big downfall for us the last couple weeks with Lindenwood and, and Northwest Missouri. He's given up those big. Big pass plays that have led to points. Um, not only do those make or cause damage on the scoreboard, but they can also cause uh, you know damage in the uh, the emotion and psyche of a team. Number three, I've matched the physicality. Um, you know, Fort Hayes is a very very tough coach team. You know, Coach Brown was on those those Pitt State teams back in the late '80s that were you know winning national championships and you know just smash mouth bruising type football. So that's the kind of mentality that he brings, um, and his his players replicate that. So we're gonna have to strap it up and match the physicality that they're going to bring to us today. Our keys to the game brought to you by Greg Seibel, your Edward Jones financial advisor. 526 commercial. Got a good crowd. Edward Jones making a sense of investing. It's overcast, cloudy, and cool on this Saturday afternoon. The temperature at 50 degrees. Looking for a football weather. Of about 51 degrees. East. Wind is from the north at about 10 miles per hour, making it feel like about 46 degrees out there. Our game time temperature brought to you by the air conditioning specialist. Professional people, professional results. Call them today for your heating, cooling, and refrigeration needs in the Emporia area. Call 620-343-0889. Emporia State will be kicking from left to right as we view it here in the press box or from north to south. Emporia State dressed in home black pants, a charcoal jersey with white numbers, and a white helmet this afternoon. Fort Hay State, white pants, white jersey with black letters and a yellow gold trim and a black helmet with a tiger on the side. As we get set for football this afternoon, hope you enjoy it. As here's the approach and Clark Schoonover. Kicks it away for Emporia State. Uh, I don't really like that uniform combination. Well, we it at the 10 yard line, up to the 15, the 20, 25, and up to the 30 yard line. And <coughs> well, on the return for we start off, they get a good State. return, good field position. That would have been uh, done. DeAndre Reed, or Dandre Reed, and in Fort, Fort Hay State will have the ball with pretty good field position to start this drive. They'll have the ball at their own 31-yard line. Their quarterback is Jacob Merza, 6'5", 215, a senior out of Jacksonville, Florida. He has thrown for 1,132 yards, nine touchdowns, and four interceptions. Mazera takes the snap, looks to throw, pass caught at the 35-yard line be a gain of four yards on the play. Making yeah, the catch Hayes, the uh, not that they were doing anything different in previous games, but like they're playing with tempo uh, Kansas. this year, which, you know, they've <coughs> not always been known for to be a tempo team. The center. He saw somebody move and 
So we start off, they get a good return, they pick up five yards, and it looks like we just jumped off sides, Don, so I'm probably, uh, well, I know I'm not in a good mood over there on the sidelines as of right now. Now they're already close to midfield uh, on their first drive. Charles Stigner is the running back out of Glenville, Georgia. He's rushed for 425 yards and two touchdowns. About to jump off sides again. And they got us again. It's two in a row. That's free, that's free yardage. Definitely not the start we wanted. Also the receiver. The tight end is With Matt where we're Parker. setting at right now uh, in this the season. Looks like we're lined up offsides five. down here. So again, right here, you can tell that uh, from a physical standpoint, like right there, they controlled the line of scrimmage. They moved us back right there. So. Already at the 47-yard line, and not even two minutes has really has went off the clock yet. I'm sure my tone of voice, like my wife would say, is not uh, probably not the right tone. You know, thinking back about this game is I, I don't know if their cadence was bothering us or they were doing something different. I, I don't know, but we, you know, they jumped there. But there were three times there. We got called for it twice of us jumping. <clears throat> you know, usually when us and Hayes play, how it has been, it's really been a back and forth battle. Uh, the last few years, a lot of times it's who's ever playing at home. You know, right there, they, they big hole. Uh, Roscoe has to come out and make the tackle to save a touchdown, really. Second four, as I've always said, those second medium calls are easy. Everybody wants to make, everybody wants to talk on the headphones, Don, when it's second four. Wide open. And he's wide open. Double post will route. Down the far Busted coverage again by well, Mary we're two and three right now. I guarantee you that the first. I, I, I'm frustrated right now. Uh, we're walking around. Looks like we didn't even show up to play. You know, 20 to 30 yards away from him. Not sure if he was the guy who blew the coverage or if he was just trying to clean up at the end. But, um, you know, we've this is the third week in a row we've seen blown coverage by ESU, giving up a uh, big pass yardage and leading the point. 41-yard pass play gives Fort Hay State the early 6-0 lead, awaiting the extra point. The attempt from De Dante Brown is good, and the Fort Hay State Tigers lead it. 7 to nothing as they score on their opening drive with 12.50 to play here in the first quarter and not the way Emporia State wanted to start this ball game. Yeah, it looks like, looks like a broken record from, you know, from the Northwest game and even from you back to the Lindenwood game with you know, just leaving guys open and, and giving, giving the quarterback plenty of time to throw. And, you, know, I mean, you could put a, a good high school quarterback back there, and if he has you know, that much time with that open receivers, you're going to have some success. That drive for Fort Hay State, four plays, 69 yards. The big play, a 41-yard scoring touchdown pass from Jacob Mazzara to Harley Hazlett, and the Tigers lead it 7 to nothing. What a football being brought to you by McKenzie Pest Control. Pests free the best it can be. Your authorized firm for the Centricon Colony Elimination System. Call them at 342-4222. Now the Hornets will get their offense on the field. Let's see if they can't respond to the quick scoring drive from Fort Hay State. As the Hornets will have two deep to return this kick. Here's the approach and the kick. It's going to be fielded at the 15. On the return for Emporia State is Trey Morris. And Trey across the 25 up to the 26-yard line. 
And that's where Emporia State will take over the football. Let's go down to Tegan Drahoon in this John North Fort sideline update. Well, it seems as though complications continue to arise for the Emporia State defense. As Logan Thompson was talking down here on the sideline, had just mentioned that he wasn't sure how it was his fault that that might have happened. Then he realized he went to the wrong side. I think it's still some communication errors. We'll see if Emporia State can settle those out and start making some stops on the defensive side. On first down for Emporia State, play action for Braxton Marstall unloads it, pass caught by Trey Harris or Tyler Harris, and Tyler carries it across the 30. Well, we'll see how our script works here, Don. Little zone read action there. Wildcat snap goes to Landon. Whoop. Get a little Wildcat. We kind of really scripted those two plays back to back. For us to play with tempo, sometimes we figure out where our guys are going to be at after a play, and we line and we try to get into a formation that guys can just turn around and line up, so we're not wasting any time. Um, Linebacking spot, Jose Delgado for four days and a first down. So first runs. down. Again, we are playing with tempo right here. We have these plays scripted. We work on them uh, no later than a Wednesday uh, practice. Open on the near sideline, and the pass was just thrown out of bounds. Uh, we'll script. <clears throat> you know, it kind of varies, honestly, but we will script. Uh, like on our first drive, we may have um, seven to eight plays script. And then what we'll do is we'll script other scenarios or other, other plays, but it'll be like a – a three-play script, you know, and then once <coughs> you, you have that three-play script and then you go to your down and distance calls, or, you know, whenever you get in a critical down and distance, that's just like a third medium, third two, you know, you may do your first two plays in your script and then instead of going to your third play, it's third and two, so now you're going to go over to your third and two. Uh, like the call sheet, Maxie you know. Takes a snap, looking to throw, has all sorts of time. Now being flushed from the pocket. Now he's looking to run, and he throws the ball. It's complete. As That's a great job scrimmage, by Brax back. right there. Probably got out of the pocket a little bit too quick. But, you know, one thing about Braxton, and you see this with quarterbacks today, is that watch the angle that he throws this ball. I mean, you can tell that he played baseball. So I do talk about that in recruiting now. Um, it's been it's a question that I do ask if quarterbacks play baseball. I'm always interested in that now, more than I used to be because of the angles that they can throw with. So yes, that's right. That is true. You know, I mean, uh, and Braxton was one of those guys that he could be rolling to his left and, and you know get his elbow uh, to to you know, get at that weird angle Third and throw back to his right. Emporia State from the Fort Hayes State 44-yard line. Justin Brown in motion from left to right. Braxton takes a snap. Here comes the pressure. Throws it over the middle. Passes caught. Great good job. Made by Justin Brown. JB always, you know, he's so done. big and physical and strong, man. Down, he, the defensive play will be Tanner Hochman, the middle We are playing with tempo. First down full That's what I like to see right here. Ah, just got to follow Denzel right there. Denzel Strong <coughs> up about three yards on the play. It'll bring up second down and seven. You know, you got to live with the good and bad when you play with tempo. I mean, it's not going to be perfect every time. Sometimes on those tempo run plays like right there, you're playing. And I think I think Landon just kind of missed following Denzel right there. Sometimes things are happening so quickly. But the thing is, you want to get them on their heels. That's the, that's the plan, uh, is to get them to where they will not – they can't they – can't, Change defenses. Usually JB brings oh, down those balls. Me. So, not starting the off the way we want to. Uh, a lot of adversity has hit us even before the game, just down, being two and three. Third and seven from the you got a three year starter at quarterback coming back. You don't expect to be two and three. On third down. Landon Nolt lines up to the left of quarterback Braxton Marstall. Three wide to the right, one wide to the left. Braxton has time. Throws the ball down the field, and it's incomplete. Intended receiver was Justin Brown. And looked like maybe Braxton was expecting uh, 
Justin to take off towards the goal line. Instead, he got bumped and had his right, right route cut short, and it makes it an incomplete pass. Bringing up fourth down and seven for employees. <coughs> so fourth down. State 34 yard line. We're going to go for it as we tend to do. I know we went for it, you know, definitely a lot more this this year here uh, in 2018 than we did last year. Yeah, you got to make sure you get the right play in. He's only having three down linemen. We've seen four down linemen so far um, here in the in the first quarter, but um, maybe didn't like the coverage, didn't like the matchup he saw on that. This With Emporia State University, your dreams are within reach. You get more choices. We offer hands-on, real-life experiences that will set you apart. At Emporia State, you get more value. And students have the second lowest debt load of all regional universities. Schedule a campus visit at emporia.edu slash visit. They've been kind of efficient this season on fourth down, and hopefully they can continue those that success this uh, this afternoon. They'll need to here to keep this drive alive, and part of the reason why Emporia State's going for it here on fourth down, unlike previous years, the field goal kicker has not shown the accuracy of being able to kick what would uh, – be a 57-yard field goal yeah, or a 51-yard I mean, field goal. Even in years past, this probably would have been a situation where Coach Higgins would, would go for it. This would be a pretty pretty long kick, but the field goal kickers have struggled early, um, which has uh, made Coach Higgins, I don't think, given him the confidence to put the field goal unit on the on the field and been going for it quite a lot or quite a bit on fourth down. Fourth down. On fourth down, Braxton takes the snap, three-man rush. Braxton has time, looking, looking, oh. up, the pressure, and he gets <coughs> Well, Couldn't find anybody I mean, over on the, on the left side, down. JB and Tyler were too close together. I don't think Braxton felt comfortable. I think if they'd had a little bit more separation, one of those guys is going to be open. You know, sometimes uh, receivers sometimes, and we don't teach this here, but, like, I mean, Everybody felt like they needed to run their route a little bit deeper right there. Or like everybody's got to be on the same page. We had one receiver running the route deeper than what he's supposed to, and the other receiver kept his the proper depth, and they got too close together. So there wasn't enough separation there for the quarterback to get a clear picture. Now they shift tight end and a fullback. Running play goes to Tigner, gets a nice hole. And he just puts his head down and drives up to the 40-yard line and gets driven backwards. They're in on the play defensively for Emporia State. Roscoe Gaywood also helping out defensively Trayvon Amons. But not until Charles Tigner picks up six yards, making it, or five yards, making it second down. It was a six-yard game, making it second down and four. Anytime you pick up six yards on a first down play, you're pretty happy. Mazzara looking to throw, has time, passes, knocked down before it can be caught. Good defensive effort that time by linebacker Jace McDowell as he knocked it away from the intended receiver, the tight end, Matt Wendelberger. Yeah, Fort Hayes isn't, you know, really sugarcoating a whole lot what they're trying to do on that first down play. You know, they had seven, eight guys in the box, and um, I think only two receivers, two tight ends. So um, in a formation like that, very seldom you're going to see anything other than a run. Uh, similar, form or similar formation here on third short. Third and four. Mazzara takes the high snap, looks to throw, unloads it in the far flat, caught by the tight end. That's Wendell Berger, and he'll have the first down as he carries it up to near midfield. They'll mark him down at the Fort Hayes State 49-yard line, and he just got into that flat, and nobody was there to cut, pick him up, and he picks up the first down. He's a bruiser, too. Uh, you know, talking to guys on the team when they were watching film um, earlier this week, he was – he was the guy that stood out to them as somebody they're going to have to keep an eye on. First and ten for Fort Hayes from their own 49-yard line. Mazzara has time to throw. He's getting deep down the field. He has a receiver wide open. As Oof. getting away from the defensive coverage. And I didn't see it, see it from the Ramsey, uh, TV, but of I trust Greg was when he says Savage. he was wide open. And Emporia State they had good protection right there, too. First down for State at the Emporia State 16 yard line. So now, a 35 <coughs> yard pass play. Back in our territory. Field, you, you 
you got to buckle up. And, you know, that, that's unfortunately that's a uh, situation where you can you got to be ready. Number 87 is a good player for them. Screen pass out to a far flag. Versatile guy, kind of like our, our S back, our stinger back, you know. That I mean, time looked like he can play receiver, split him out there, and also put him in the backfield. Away so now they're on. Off that little looks like the one. Out to the right side of the first and ten. But made the first quarter's not over. Uh, it's not even. I mean, we just said there's hadn't been much time ran. We are, uh, you know, we're struggling right now. It's a great job there by by Logan Thompson right there, closing the gap. Big second down now. So the thing about it is when, when you get inside, when teams get inside the three on you, you got to keep playing hard. Uh, you never know what's going to happen. We talked to our guys about that a lot. Great job by, by, by Jace. You know, if those guys don't make those tackles, one-on-one -on -one tackles, those guys walk in. Uh, they got everybody else blocked up. There's one guy there to make the tackle, uh, and we do a good job of, of bringing him down. After giving up a big play, this would be huge for us. A loss of one on the play makes it second or third and goal from the yeah, two. Yeah, third and goal. Out of the pistol, Mazera. Behind him, the running back. Scoot up. Hand off, going to the running back, looking for a hold. Does he get it? Ball comes free. There the we go. Come up with it. So we stop them right there. You know, like, we, we play the first two plays the way we need to play. I mean, and, and that's always a test of your character right there. Sometimes guys, you know, they get on the two, they get blocked, and, and guys score on the first play. You know, our guys bowed their neck right here. Um, I've seen it so many times happen with us. I go back to 2015. We were playing Central Missouri in a big in one of the in the longest halftime game, and we got a big turnover there on the two or three yard line. And our it was third down. Our guys just kept playing, kept fighting. Something's good's going to happen. Braxton takes the snap, has time, throws a near sideline pass caught by Justin Brown. They'll give him forward progress to the nine yard line. That'll so we got to get it out seven. just to get some a breathing room. We're on the two or three, three so just throw a little hitch route right, right there. Sells parts and service since 1963. Or State quickly up to the line of scrimmage. Trailing seven to nothing, 7.14 to play here in the second or first quarter. Second and three for the Hornets. Running play, Landon Dolph looking for some running room. He gets a shove, but his offensive oh, line will carry it across not the, much, uh, the 11 yard line. You know, not, not much there for the Hornets after as far as movement. Um, Great job on that first down play of just um, calling something that's a high percentage of a hook route to JB. Just keep your backs, um, you know, off the, off, you know, off the two yard line. Yeah, so right here, if we had a three play script going, we would probably be off. The, the third play and would be into our third and two calls. Manziel strong in the slot to the left. Braxton out of the shotgun. Play action. He's going to call his own number. Well, he will not get. We do the quarterback yards. run game, which honestly I think is a good call in third and short because when defenses with their run fits, you know, they don't have uh, guys responsible for the quarterback, so you can sometimes get an extra gap on them, uh, get an extra hat on them. Um, right. Yes. We, we do. We've had some athletic guys that can make plays with their legs. Thing about it is, you know, like in Braxton, of course, was an option quarterback in high school. Uh, you know, ran the flex bone, probably threw the ball maybe five to six times a game. And I know by the time his career was done at our place, he there was one game he threw it 62 times in one game. So. But the, the athletic ability, like, so he's ran the ball. He's used to it. Um, so we probably did a little bit more with him than we did with, say, like Brent uh, or Tyler Eckenrode. You know, so, and Braxton was big. You know, he was 6'2", 2'10", 2'15". the first quarter, 7 nothing. 48 State with a lead. Hornet football brought to you by 
Just, you know, I go back, Don, and think about the times I've called quarterback runs. You know, quarterback draw against Northeastern in 2014. Brent broke his collarbone. This kid here. Uh, I know Parker's selling it, man. We tell our guys to sell it. Uh, he's doing a heck of a job with that. We got it. I, Coming away with the football, big bear track right there. From his down lineman spot, that'll be getting the fumble recovery. So the Hornets come up with their second fumble recovery. The kid playing quarterback for him right there, who actually was their starter this past year, did a good job. His dad played here at Emporia State. That's what caused that fumble. Trying to get across the line of scrimmage, just couldn't secure it into his chest with the running back. Absolutely get hit once again. The defense again forcing that so, turnover. Another turnover. Now we need to do something. 7 0. Defensive coaches are excited about a game like this. I'm upset with it. Um, was this maybe in 19 had a really good, almost dominant defense? Was this maybe the game that kind of started that group gelling, you think, maybe? Yeah, that's a good point, you know, because I think we got be – we were we, – we basically this year – we played Denzel a different – we, we uh, changed a few things in our defensive package. Uh, and I think as we as each game progressed, we're at our sixth game right here. We were beginning, beginning to get better with it and get comfortable with it. Um, and then and we played – you know, we did a great job this game, so I do think that it kind of carried over, uh, you know, and as we got better, then, then as we got into to this past fall, we were really comfortable with it. And when you got a guy like Jace who understands the defense like he does, I mean, he plays Mike linebacker, and uh, it's like playing quarterback on defense. You know, he's getting guys lined up and making sure everybody's in the right spot for the ball snapped. I mean, you know, as, as best that he can. Success through the air against zone defenses, some things about Carney and Northeastern. Hayes um, playing man like Pitt and Northwest play this, um, but yes, he was able to have success against uh, man coverage so far. Pass play on first down, intended for Justin Brown. He's in triple coverage, has the ball knocked away from him, he makes it an incomplete pass. That would have been a tough catch. Yeah, it looks like they have the. You know, JB caught a lot of balls here. Playing a spy. <laughs> He's a career leading receiver here. Um, Every time we throw to JB, um, the free safety should be as good on coverage on him. And he took, you know, the thing about JB, he was so physical that uh, every time he caught the ball, you know, he played softball, he was getting he was getting hit, you know. I mean, guys were being physical with him. Uh, it's going to be on Emporia State. It's going to be a procedure penalty on the Hornets. Too many guys lined up in the backfield. Got to have at least seven guys on the line of scrimmage, whether it be a receiver, or, um, offensive lineman. There have to, has to be at least seven. The lad will move the ball back five yards, make it second down and 15. 434 to play here in the first quarter. 7 0, Fort Hay State with a lead. Braxton on second down, looks to the sidelines for the play from the coaches. Takes the snap, handoff. Running play, Landon Knoll. I mean, that's a great job by Landon. Uh, Landon just ran the ball. He had such low pad level when he ran. Uh, and another player that he got so much better as, as he was here. And that's kind of like what we like to do with our guys is you bring him in and you red shirt him and then, uh, you know, let him, let him get better as they progress through the program, you know, and, and, and having guys stay here and be developed here. Um, that's how we, that's how we've been, I think, successful, you know, um, Guys that like Landon who care about the program, care about Emporia State. Um, you know, when they leave, they're going to stay in contact. Very, very strong in the weight room. And 
That injury bothered him, bothered him uh, I think, kind of from here on out uh, in the season, you know. But, but Jalen did a really good job for us. Um. And students have the second lowest debt load of all regional universities. Schedule a campus visit at emporia.edu slash visit. Conventions and special event planning for free visitor materials call 342-1600. Gives us a chance to take a look at some of the other scores around the MIAA this afternoon. Is uh, fourth quarter score. It's Nebraska Kearney leading Lindenwood 38-14. That game being played in Kearney. Uh, first quarter score. Washburn leading Northeastern State 14 to nothing. Uh, games that are also getting underway at the same time that this game got underway. Well, let's update that Washburn Northeastern score. It was 34-14 at the half. Two minutes. Barkeep, Bud Lights for everyone. Actually, um, I prefer a nice mead. Barkeep, Bud Lights for everyone and a mead. Is it autumnal? Bud Lights for everyone and one autumnal mead. Is it malty and full-bodied? Because I like it more. Cancel that mead. Bud Light for the many. I don't have any live stat information up on that particular game. I think I saw they were in a weather delay. That could be. Of course, we had some weather in this area overnight. And uh, fortunately, we were able to play this afternoon. Let's go down to the John North Fort sideline and take in Trahoon. Uh, Jalen Riddell right now not being able to put any pressure on that leg. They were actually trying to make sure the knee was kept straight. I'm not entirely sure right now if it's going to be just his knee. They're also looking towards the shin as well, checking the entire leg. I'm not entirely sure what could have happened. We're going to keep you updated as best we can, but right now, not able to come off the field on his own power, finally putting a little bit of weight on the leg. But as for right now, it doesn't look like we're going to see him anytime soon. Well, Emporia State will have the ball facing third and two from the Fort Hayes State 44-yard line. The 42-yard line is where the first down stick is located. Landon Nault will line up behind quarterback Braxton's Marstall as they work out of the pistol. Single receiver to the near side, twins to the far side. Now Landon shifts to the left of quarterback Braxton Marstall, and motion comes Justin Brown from left to right. Braxton takes the snap, looking to throw. Has time, sets up, pass caught by Justin Brown. Nice catch. Bobbled him momentarily, but came up with a reception. He goes down at the 38-yard line. He'll have the first down for Emporia State as Aquil Knowles, the cornerback, made the tackle for Fort Hayes. ESU offensive line doing a really good job. Um, looked like there were about six in the box, you know, just matching hats and picking up blitzes to give giving Braxton time to get rid of the ball. Braxton facing first and ten from the Fort Hayes State 37-yard line. Takes the snap, play action, sets up, throws it near sideline, and the pass is incomplete, almost intercepted. Intended receiver is Jordan Reed, and stepping right in front of Jordan to almost come up with the inter interception was a Quill Knowles, but Jordan Reed did a nice job of becoming a defender and knocked it out of his hands. Yeah, Knowles uh, looked like up here that he had the pick initially, but as he was going down to the ground, Jordan Reed was able to poke it out for an incomplete pass. Wipe the sweat from your brow on that one. Second and 10 for Emporia State from the Tiger 38-yard line. Jordan Reed and Denzel Strong to the right. To the left side, Justin Brown and Tyler Harris. Pass thrown, incomplete, intended for Landon Nold, who was open at the 35-yard line. That pass a little bit high, but there was pressure around Braxton that time, and he had to hurry that throw, and he put a little bit too much mustard on it, and unable to hang on to it was Landon Nold. Even if he had uh, caught that pass, he had three white jerseys all the way around and probably wouldn't have been uh, for much more than two or three-yard gain. Makes it third and ten for Emporia State. Three wideouts this time to the left side. Single receiver to the right. Braxton to throw. Has time. Sets up. He's going deep downfield. Justin Brown, the intended receiver, a little bit too high. Uncatchable pass. and He had man-for-man -man coverage. And Justin tried to reach up and pull it down, but he wasn't going to catch that one. 
anytime you can get Justin Brown man for man on, you know, just about anybody in the country, I would say, um, you know, you like your chances, but that ball thrown a little bit behind, a little bit tall, uh, would have been a tough catch to make. Onis will punt the ball away as Tyler Harris comes on. Deep to receive this punt for Fort Hay State. This will be Lane Bieberly. He'll set up his own 10-yard line. Good snap. Tyler waiting. He'll hang it high in the air. Fair catch called for. It'll take a Hornet bounce, and it'll come to a stop inside the 10, still rolling, and they'll finally down it at the 6. That was a very good punt. Tyler, I mean, I'm going to give some credit to Tyler Harris. He's been doing a really good job this entire season of punting the ball. Um, I don't know if we have any stats on him, but I think he's averaging right around. With Emporia State University, your dreams are within reach. You get more choices. We offer hands-on, real-life experiences that will set you apart. At Emporia State, you get more value. And students have the second lowest debt load of all regional universities. Schedule a campus visit at emporia.edu slash visit. Hi, this is Adrian Burris, and I'm the HR manager at Camso Manufacturing here in Emporia. At Camso, we have several schedule options for our employees to choose from. Guaranteed 40-hour work weeks with fixed schedules, limited mandatory overtime, and premium pay for weekend shifts. Positions are available, and it's true. Camso's benefits are hard to beat. Apply now in person at Kansas Works or go to localjobnetwork.com. Did you know that each year termites cause billions of dollars in damage? That's why you should consider the Centricon system with always active technology from McKenzie Pest Control to help prevent costly termite damage before it occurs. Centricon Always Active is always baited and always ready to protect your home or business from damaging termites. And it's affordable. Call McKenzie Pest Control for a free termite evaluation and learn how Centricon Always Active can help protect your biggest investment black and gold through and through mix 104.9 first and 10 from the six yard line uh, chance fuller in a quarterback he hands it off to charles tigner straight ahead he carries it up to the nine yard line as gary woods makes the tackle making it second down and six after the four yard gain down to 237 to play here in the first quarter. 7-0. Fort Hay stay with a lead. Fuller working out of the shotgun. Handoff goes to Tigner, and this time he gets hit in the backfield and no place to go. Great defense from Emporia State. Parker Bass, along with Logan Powell, making the tackle for a loss back of the 10-yard line. Loss of one makes it third down and seven. They're bringing the pressure also with Kate Harrelson from his will linebacker position. Was able to you know, find a way through the offensive line and get in on that tackle. Big third down play right here for Emporia State. As Fuller works out of the shotgun, Tigner in the backfield with him. He looks to throw it as Fuller has time. Sets over the middle. The pass is incomplete. Intended for his tight end, Matt Wendelberger. Coverage being provided by Roscoe Gatewood. It's an incomplete pass, and the Hornets are forcing Fort Hay State to punt the ball away. This, is, this could be a big opportunity for us, especially if we can, uh, you know, string together a good return, but um, at the very least, maybe get the ball around midfield or so and set us up with good field position to get some points on the board here, uh, here in the first quarter. The field position, we got them pinned right here. To receive the punt, tries the rugby style kick. Get away. Get away. Get away. Nobody's going to grab it and return it. So we got good field position. We have not, uh, you know, we've moved the ball a little bit offensively. Just. Those advertisements got some volume to them, don't they? <laughs> Uh, but but we're just we're, we're moving the ball a little bit. Um, Hayes is so good defensively to where they make you be monotonous offensively. I mean, they're going to do a really good job of keeping things in front of them and not give up the big play. You know, we, we 
when we're having success offensively, we're going to get some big plays, you know, uh, at, during and some point in the game. And, and we've had to be really meticulous in our, our drives but here. And, you know, sometimes you lose patience. Of the afternoon. Or I lose patience. Victoria State quarterback Braxton Marshall's 8 for 18 for 60 yards, his longest pass play 12. Been sacked once. Like right there, you know, our and longest pass play has been 12 yards. yards. Um, just trying to I think, I think this is a nickel and dime him a little bit. Drive for us right now with this kind of field position, unable to get points um, off the two turnovers that we can capitalize on. Um, you know, starting a drive inside the inside around 50, that, that would be huge. Maxim will work out on the shot and in the backfield with him. Justin yep. Brown along Kai the and North. Landon both. We went to a little yeah, package in this game that really Braxton ended up working really well for us. We ran zone read right there, which is basically what Braxton did in high school, but he's just in shotgun. You know, in high school he did it underneath center. I mean, but this was a little uh, package that we did. Didn't change our offense. Kai was such a Again, veteran, understood our offense. Uh, so he's running like receiver routes here. So so what he's doing is he's got an option to go to either run a hitch, go out, or go inside based off how uh, the defender is playing him. You know, and this is a guy that plays tailback, and for him to rep it all week, I'm a big believer in repetitions. And, uh, for him to rep that uh, this package all week, I thought he did a really good job. I thought it really – paid huge dividends for us and being able to move the football, honestly. There you go. That's right. It makes it easy. Throw a dart at the call sheet. Call whatever the, wherever, whatever the dart hits. Jordan Jackson in motion, pass thrown, caught by Kai. He catches at the 44-yard line or 46-yard line. Kai was such a good receiver out of the backfield, yards. too. We'll bring up you know, I mean, nine for the Hornets. Kai always did a good job of finding ways to utilize all the strengths that he had. I mean, he went through so many injuries here. Um, but he was so good at other things. So now, Don, we've kind of slowed the tempo down a little bit. That's a heavy play. I think Braxton might have mentioned that there. With the with the he's talking to him, but I think he thinks he got hit late. <laughs> All quarterbacks do, and I'm sure I probably think he did too. <laughs> Sets up at his own 10 yard line. You know, Good that official right there, the Tyler, and he hangs this uh, one high in the air. head official, take a water bounce, bounce inside the Dwight. Still bouncing. And I know it Dwight really well, but Don, what's funny, in 1999, we played for the national championship when I was at Northwest Oklahoma State, and Dwight was the, you know, uh, head official in that game. Bounce, and ESU is, um, you know, here going into the second quarter is going to be able to maybe pin, pin Fort Hayes deep. With Emporia State University, your dreams are within reach you get more choices. We offer hands-on, real-life experiences that will set you apart. At Emporia State, you get more value. And students have the second lowest debt load of all regional universities. Schedule a campus visit at emporia.edu slash visit. The effectiveness of our integrative and decentralized approach and help us achieve our purpose of improving the global agribusiness and food chain. Those values are integrity, teamwork, citizenship, entrepreneurship, and openness and trust. The bottom line is we are open to other ideas and opinions and we trust our colleagues. Bungie North America, enhancing lives by improving the global agribusiness and food production chain. 
Did you know the Memorial Union on the ESU campus is a convention center second to none? Bring your company annual meeting, trade show, class reunion, or any special event to ESU. The union can accommodate groups up to 1,000. Contribute to Emporia's economy and invite your professional organization to meet in Emporia. Call the Emporia CVB at 342-1600 for more information. KFFX Emporia, today's best hits, Mix 104.9. We go to the second quarter, 7-0. Fort Hay State with a lead. They have the ball, first and 10. They'll start this drive at their own two-yard line. Jacob Mazzara back in at quarterback for Fort Hay State. They'll line up with single receivers left and right. Jacoby Williams off to the left side. To the right side, it's Lane Bieberly. Or make that uh, Harley Hazlitt. Running play straight ahead, Tigner. Oh, he gets hit hard, but he still picks up a couple of yards. Jace McDowell looking like he came in and knifed, knifed in and stuck the running back pretty hard. Was able to stop him for only a you know, gain of a few yards. Gain of two on the play, making it second down and eight. Ball spotted at the four-yard line. Andrew Jay and Harley Hazlitt wide out to the right side. Single receiver to the left side. Mazzara out of the shotgun, takes a snap, looks to throw, has time. He's being chased in the end zone. He throws it to the near flat. The pass is going to be caught. Close. That'll be enough for a first down as he catches it out at the 14-yard line. Andrew Jay making the catch, and there wasn't a defender around him when that ball was thrown. There was too much coverage or too much cushion there. Coming up to make the tackle, though, for Emporia State from his nickel spot was G Gary Woods. Yeah, Brent Davenport's corner on the coverage there. Um, doing a good job of keeping the body in front of him, but still giving up the first down. Here's a toss sweep to Tigner to the left side. He gets to the corner, turns the corner, slips one tackle and slips another tackle, still on his feet, and finally gets knifed down at the 30-yard line as Trayvon Amons has to make the tackle, but almost 15 yards downfield. Yeah, three potential Hornets, um, you know, being in position to make that play, one of which was a defensive lineman. Looks like maybe Jackson Mays couldn't quite catch up. Uh, Logan Thompson trying to go for the ankle tackle but was able to wrap him up. And then uh, the running back doing some more dancing and picking up the first down. Got to make those open field tackles. There's a swing pass out to Tigner out in the left flat. That pass falls incomplete. It'll make it second and 10 for Fort Hay State. They have the ball at the air. Tiger 30-yard line. They're moving now from left to right or from north to south as we view it. 345 to play. Second quarter, 7-0. Fort Hay State with a lead. They started this drive at their own two-yard line. I was just about to mention that, that, you know, doing a good job of, you know, getting their backs off the, off the wall and, you know, having some more room to work with. Zara takes the high snap play action. Here comes the pressure. He eludes one defender. Now he cannot elude the second defender. And down he goes as he gets sacked. Getting uh, credit for the quarterback sack for Emporia State will be Jackson Mays. Yeah, Merrick Thompson, another guy doing a really good job of uh, getting penetration. Um, was the first to initially make contact with Mazzara, but Mazzara was able to um, evade him. But Jack Mays coming in and cleaning up for the sack. Really good job. Put him back in third and long. Loss of four makes it third and 14 for the Tigers. They have the ball at their own 26-yard line. Mazzara to throw. Has some time. He dumps it off short. Oh, we should have a penalty marker, and we do. There will be a holding penalty as Tigner makes the catch and carries it out to the 35-yard line. But that's going to go for not. Unless Emporia State decides to take the penalty in the play, it's still going to be fourth down for Fort Hayes. That's what I would do in this situation. Um, you you still got them fourth and five from their own 35. That's you know, definitely, uh, definitely um, you know, a punting situation. So I, would, I would decline the penalty here. And that penalty will be declined, so they'll take the play, and that will make it fourth down, and Emporia State will force them to punt. Yeah, the left guard on that, Amari Ingram Bolden for Fort Hayes, you know, pretty much tackling Jace McDown out in the flat um, as he was about to make the tackle. And um, as an offensive lineman, you cannot tackle a defensive player. Unless they've intercepted the ball That's or right. picked up a fumble and started to go the other way. Deep to receive the punt for Emporia State. Kai Collins on a bounce. He'll field it at the 15-yard line looking for some running room. Uh, he's hemmed in, and we're going to get a block in the back on Emporia State. Yeah, I mean, that was that was a tough play. Uh, Brent Davenport 
I mean, it look, yeah, probably block in the back. Looks like maybe more block from the side, but um, as Coach Lindsay teaches us on punt coverage, um, if it's even close, if you think, you know, if you're if your head isn't you know right in front of them, just let them go because the 15-yard penalty isn't worth it. The return marked to the 22-yard line, and it is a penalty on Emporia State. Block in the back, and they'll mark it off from the point of the infraction, which is a 15-yard line, and that'll be a half the distance penalty, and that would put the ball at the 8-yard line. 12.39 to play here in the... Second quarter, 7 0, Fort Hayes State with the lead. What a football being brought. Barkeep, Bud Lights for everyone. Actually, um, I prefer a nice mead. Barkeep, Bud Lights for everyone, and a mead. Is it autumnal? Bud Lights for everyone, and one autumnal mead. Is it malty and full bodied? Because I like malt. Cancel that mead. Bud Light for the many. All Mackenzie Pest Control. Serving communities throughout East Central Kansas. Mackenzie Pest Control. Pest free. The best it can be. Mackenzie Pest free. The best it can be. Hello, my name is Matt Barnett, and I'm the master planner here at Camso Manufacturing USA. My MBA from Emporia State University was vital to my success here at Camso. As an ESU grad, I'm proud of my alma mater and support the Hornet Nation. Go Hornets! Camso, the road-free company, is the world leader in the design, manufacturing, and distribution of off-road tires, wheels, rubber tracks, and undercarriage systems to serve the material handling, construction, agricultural, and power sports industries. Camso, the road-free company, 1601 East South Avenue in Emporia. Black and gold, through and through. Mix 104.9. Back at Welch Stadium along with Reed Buckingham taking Trahoon. First and 10 for Emporia State from the 8-yard line. Handoff goes to Landon Nolt. Straight ahead for Landon Nolt. He carries it up to the 15-yard line. That's a gain of 7 yards for Landon. Bobbled snap. Braxton comes up with it. It popped right back to him. He'll pick up a couple of yards as he carries it to the 16-yard line. It'll bring up third down and two. And seen a couple of times here in this first half where the snap hasn't been quite on the mark. Yeah, that one a little bit high. Maybe looked like Braxton wasn't, wasn't quite ready for it, um, but it was a little high. But it, fortunately, he was able to, to pull it down and gain a couple yards, good recovery. Third down play. Hornets are 5 of 9 on third down here in this first half. Braxton takes the snap. Running play, Landon Alt looking for some place to go, and there is no place to go. He gets hit at the point of the attack as Malik Young, a defensive tackle, makes the hit at the line of scrimmage. It makes it fourth down for the Hornets, and they'll have to send on the punt team. Yeah, fourth and short, you know, backed up here. You don't want to risk it go for it in this situation. Uh, sending on the punt team, probably a, a good call in this situation. We'll see if Tyler Harris can continue the trend of, uh, you know, backing up Hayes and you know, giving us good field position to work with defensively. Lane Bieberly drops back to receive the punt from Tyler Harris, who will punt from his own two-yard line, and they'll put nine guys on the line of scrimmage. Good snap. Kick is away. It's an end over, and kick it will take a couple of bounces. Bieberly plays it on one bounce. He has one defender with, but can't get away from another defender, and he'll have a return of maybe two yards on the play. Let's go down to the John North Ford sideline and take in Trahoon. As we said earlier, Jalen Riddell, Came down with a injury. It has been confirmed. It is his right knee. Been on with Emporia State University, your dreams are within reach. You get more choices. We offer hands-on, real-life experiences that will set you apart. At Emporia State, you get more value. And students have the second lowest debt load of all regional universities. Schedule a campus visit at emporia.edu slash visit. Turns out to be nothing really serious, but the way the trainers are looking at him and talking with him, uh, I think it could be something uh, that most football players don't like to talk about. Yeah, and I mean, I'm looking down there. Um, his dad down there on, next to the training table talking to him. Um, you know, that'd be really unfortunate if it does turn out to be serious. Jalen is a, a great guy and a very hard worker, and, um, you know, so far this season has been able to do a lot for us offensively, um, you know, playing that super back position with Denzel Strong and um, even working his way into the slot, catching passes for us. So 
Um, that would be a big loss if it does turn out to be uh, pretty serious. Fort Hayes takes over first and 10 from the Emporia State 46-yard line. Mazzara looking to throw, has time, a little swing pass out in the flat. It's going to be caught by Harley Hazlett. Hazlett will make the catch and gets out of bounds at the 40-yard line, a gain of six on the play. Just another way to run a stick concept. They've turned it over a couple of times as well. Running play goes to Tigner straight ahead, and he'll pick up the first down of, as he gets knocked down. He dodged some bullets he might here. Be a yard short the people didn't set it up. Yeah, I mean, you're, that is true. I mean, they they, they they got the ball down there on the two, three yard line. Uh, we were able to get a turnover. Um, that that bailed us out. Um, you know, and the way I look at it, those things are those ebbs and flows of games that I talk about, and. Uh, credit to our guys by continuing to play. Um, and they've had the field position, besides them being pinned uh, earlier inside the 10, I think maybe once, we're, they're winning the field position battle. So, like, we are uh, very fortunate to be where it's at right now, 7-0. to zero. And, and not 14-0 to zero or, or 17 they had a real good field goal kicker, too, as well. I mean, he's really good. Play clock got started incorrectly. No, it didn't. <laughs> Third short here. Um, I only think the play clock starts incorrectly when I run out of time. You know, as far as calling a play. Zara out of the shotgun takes a snap, hand off to Tigner. He gets hit, but he breaks a tackle. He missed the tackle right there. And still on his feet before he finally gets wrestled down at the. So now they're inside the 30. Um, trying to make a stop at the line of scrimmage, but just couldn't get the job done. Finally coming I just feel like right now we're just so much on our heels on both sides of the ball. Um, I think we're playing well defensively. You know, we're giving up some yardage, but we're we're getting stops or getting a turnover when we need to. On first down, play action, a little swing pass out to Tigner. Gets out in the nylon. Good job there. And he gets stood up and taken down. To make making a tackle Logan Thompson will help by Logan. Woods. He's got that big, making that tackle with that big old cast on his wrist he's right there. He's a, I mean, he, he was a transfer from K-State. He was a walk-on at K-State. Ended up doing a really, really good job for us. You know, the rest of the season, if this defense is going to continue to play well, um, he's going to have to play well and really be a leader. And I, you know, he's, he's the guy to do it. No gain on the play, making it second and ten. Hand off to Tigner, he breaks a tackle. Mm. He's across the 15. Goes a little tired right there. We missed a the tackle. 15. We just made one, then we and missed that one. The whole one hurry, you know, we got to keep our, our ten yards down the head and eyes up. Get you tired. Ten yard line. It'll be first and start goal. lacking ten a little bit in fundamentals. Start Eight thinking about how you feel. Second quarter, Fort Hayes leading seven to nothing. Hornet football brought to you by McKenzie Pest Control. So here we are, uh, mid, about midway through the second. Uh, they're on the 10-yard line. They're controlling the game right now. Such a good fake, fake the camera guy out, pick up five yards, uh, second five right now. That was Cade Harrelson. Wheel linebacker, but a gain of they'll mark him out of bounds actually at the seven yard yes, line. Picked so up a three. gain of three on the play, making it second and goal from the seven. Yeah, Jacob Mazzara is uh, you know a known known around the conference. He's probably one of the one of the most talented quarterbacks, one of the best quarterbacks in the conference. He and Braxton Marstall. Uh, Mazzara more of a game manager. Braxton more of a big play. Play or pass play into the end zone incomplete, going to middle of the end zone. Pass get a, that time you know, good, it's a good job right there. That's basically just one on one right there. Morris, you know, somebody's got to make a play, get a stop. I mean, there's nothing really fancy about the, that. It's like one on one in practice. Receivers lining up on the seven yard line and going at it. Close to 3,000 yards, 23 touchdowns. Um, so he's a, I mean, obviously leading them to a, to a third down. Big down right here. Sure, they're going to look to go to 87 Third somehow. Goal, to throw nope. Dumps it short. Oh, there we go. We get a tip ball. Uh, 
And I don't know if that's Parker that tipped it, but again, another turnover. Uh, was this our third turnover of the game? That's huge in the first half. So these are those games. I've been on both sides where, like, if I'm over on Fort Hayes' side, you feel like you have control of the game, but you just can never slam the door shut because you're turning the ball over and you start getting nervous like, all right, we're letting the other team hang around enough to where they're going to have a chance to beat us, um, you know, in the fourth quarter. So, and then I've been on the side that I'm on, you know, this Saturday on our side, thankful. Uh, that we're, we're, our defense is coming up with turnovers. Braxton, time to throw. Looking, 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 looking. Now he's going to run the ball. And the hole closes quickly as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. And Tanner Hochman comes up to make the tackle from his bandit position. And the Hornets face second and 10 from the six yard line. The yeah, Fort Hayes kind of runs a bit of an odd defense with four linebackers and four down defensive linemen. Braxton working out of the shotgun. Again, Kai Cowns in the backfield with them. Twin receivers off to the right side. Tied in to the left. Braxton takes the snap. Fakes the handoff. He's going to run the ball himself. He's across the 10, 15, 20. Out to the 25-yard line, a 30-yard line. He carries it out to the 32-yard line. And that is covering some real estate. And speaking of real estate, if you're thinking of buying or selling your home, call Jeff Deb or Bree Williams of Eck Real Estate at 341 Soul. That's 341-7653. That's a 26-yard gain. Braxton to throw and maybe throws it a little bit too soon, a little bit behind the intended receiver, Justin Brown. And Justin says, that one's on me. Yeah, pounding his chest. You I mean, again, he had white jerseys all around him. Probably would have only been a two- to three-yard gain. But, um, you know, still, still catches you got to make and catches that he usually does make. Oregon State brings in a couple of extra receivers as Jordan Reed wide out to the right side. Three to the left side, Harris, Strong, and Brown. Danzel Strong on a crossing route makes the catch on the second down pass play. He goes down at the 38-yard line, bringing up second down and four after a gain of six. I didn't like the spot they gave him on that one. I thought he gained more than that. Braxton on third down, looking to throw, has time, far sideline, off the top of the turf. The ball is going to be caught, and then fighting for a first down will be Justin Brown. What a catch. Or no, that's, yes, that is Justin Brown. It looked like maybe Kai Cowens, or it was Kai Cowens, excuse me. Those numbers get scrunched up, and sometimes it's hard to read the numbers. On first down, Braxton looking to throw, has time, throws the ball. It's going to be caught by Justin Brown. He had man-for-man -man coverage. Bounced off the defender and made the catch as uh, Doyen Jabowu was on the coverage, but a first gain on the play of six yards, or make that five yards, making it second down and five from the Emporia State 48-yard line. Braxton takes the snap once again, sets up, has time, far, throws it, and the pass is going to be knocked away. It was intended for Jordan Reed stepping in front of him and knocking it down a Quill Knowles, making it third and five for Emporia State. We've called his name, you know, a couple times a day uh, with good coverage. He's he's been doing a really good job and uh, almost had one one near pick earlier in the game. So I mean, he's the guy that we're gonna have to look out for. On third down, Braxton working out of the shotgun with him in the backfield. Kai Cowens, twin receivers left and right stack formation. Braxton play action sets up, throws the ball down the field. He had a man wide open. Jordan Jackson was wide open. If he makes the completion. It's a touchdown for Emporia State. Yeah, great little rub route. Looks like uh, Cole Schumacher, redshirt freshman, playing the slot. Um, you know, yeah, it looked like he had the the, uh, the safety on him in the corner playing zone defense, bit on the slant as well. And, you know, Braxton just missing a wide-open receiver. That would have been huge. 6-0-2 to play, second quarter, 7-0, Fort Hay State. Leading as Tyler Harris gets set to punt it away. When it's facing fourth and five from their own 48-yard line, here comes the kick from Tyler Harris. Angles it to the far sideline. Fair catch called for and made by Lane Bieberly as he makes the catch at the 20, let's see where they'll mark it at the, just shy of the 24-yard line. And that's where Fort Hayes will take over the football. And once again, another turnover in Emporia State, unable to take advantage of it. 
and just missed a big scoring play. Yeah, Jordan Jackson running running wide open down the seam, um, but again, Braxton just overthrowing him a little bit. That would have been that would have been really big if we could have uh, taken advantage of that of that turnover. On first down, Jacob Mazera working out of the shotgun or correction, make that chance full of the quarterback. Here's a running play. Handoff goes to DJ Hickman, and Hickman carries it across the 30, and they'll finally bring him down after a nine yard carry at the 33 yard line of Fort Hay State. Yeah, Hayes going with a uh, with a two quarterback setup here, and doesn't look like Mazera's hurt, so I wonder what the rationale behind that is. Fuller, a little swing pass out to Hickman. Hickman makes the catch. He'll have the first down and then some as he works his way across the 35 up to the 39-yard line. That'll be a gain of five yards, but a first down for Fort Hayes State. When you look at D.J. Hickman, 5'9", 170. You look at Tigner, 5'9", 180. A couple of short, speedy guys. High snap to Fuller. He hands it off. To Hickman and Hickman gets hit, but not until he picks up three yards. Looked like Emporia State put a nice hit on him, but he was able to spin up four upfield for a gain of three to the 42 yard line at Fort Hayes. Yeah, big, big mass of bodies. Good job of plugging up holes, but it was kind of able to jump over the pile and lunge forward for a couple. 455 to play, second quarter, 7 0 Fort Hayes State. Another running play to the right side this time. Handoff again goes to DJ Hickman. Coming up to make the tackle for Emporia State from his defensive back spot. That'll be Roscoe Gatewood. Gary Woods, another guy, won't show up in the stat sheet, but he did a great job of bringing pressure late, uh, picking up a block and forcing the running back to change direction and um, putting him right, of the, right into the lap of Roscoe Gatewood. Makes it third and four for Fort Hayes. Fort Hayes brings a receiver in, and Emporia State has a chance to make a defensive substitution. Now the uh, Officials get out of the way. Fuller claps his hands, takes the snap, looks to throw far flat. The pass is going to be caught. Going up and coming down with a reception, Harley Hazlett. He'll make the catch and go down at the Emporia State 49-yard line, and that's going up and making a play. Yeah, it was. That was a, that was a high, wobbly thrown ball. Um, I mean, like Greg, you, like you just said, just going up and, and making plays. Hazlett, 6'3", 230-pound. He's a junior out of Abilene. He came in with 25 catches on the season, 212 yards, and so far this afternoon, five catches for 73 yards and a touchdown. He's a big body. He's a guy that um, you know is similar to uh, guys that have given given us trouble earlier in the season. Another running play straight ahead for Hickman, and Hickman down to the 45-yard line for a gain of four before he gets stopped and driven back. But it's four yards down the field. It'll bring up second down and six for Fort Hayes from the Emporia State 45-yard line. Wanted football brought to you by Camsoul Manufacturing USA at 1601 East South Avenue, proudly supporting Emporia State University athletics, academics, and alumni. Good luck to the Hornet football team. Stingers up. On second down, Fuller takes the snap, looks to throw, swings a near sideline. The pass is going to be caught by Hazlett, and he'll go down at the 41-yard line. It'll bring up third down and two after a gain of four yards on the play. Looks like we had Brent Davenport and Jordan Wallace both in coverage. Uh, good job of them of bringing down a big body in open, in open field. Fort Hayes shuffling their formation. They'll go with double tights, twin receivers off to the left side. Fuller working out of the shotgun. Hickman in the backfield. He'll take the handoff straight ahead. He gets hit and driven back. Jace McDown finishing off the play, making initial contact. Jameek Murphy. As he shot through there and made the big hit for Emporia State, and it brings up fourth down and three for the Fort Hayes State Tigers. Yeah, you mentioned Jamek Murphy, um, a junior college transfer from up in New York from ASA Junior College up in Staten Island. Um, he's a guy that they brought in in the offseason to um, you know, hopefully make an impact. Haven't seen him a whole lot early in the season, but um, looks like he's starting to get some playing time and is uh, making an impact here today. Uh, punt the ball away for Fort Hayes as Dante Brown, Kai Callens, runs up on it, and it goes over his head. It goes into the end zone, and Emporia State will get the ball at the 20-yard line, trailing 7 to nothing with a minute 49 to play here in the first half. 
Fort Hayes State scored on their very first possession since that time. The Emporia State defense has done a lot of bending, but hasn't broke. They've gotten three turnovers, two fumble recoveries, and an interception. Unfortunately, the offense hasn't been able to capitalize. Yeah, like you said, the three turnovers and, you know, the offense is, is moving the ball and has, has had opportunities, but, um, you know, Braxton missing an open receiver and just not being able to string drives together. On first down, Braxton out of the shotgun. Landon Olt back in at running back. Braxton takes a snap, play action, sets up, zings it. Far sideline, pass is caught by Jordan Reed. He goes out of bounds. They mark him out of bounds at the 27-yard line, a gain of seven on the play. Yeah, first and 10, seeing, uh, seeing about a 10-yard cushion over there by the corner, um, hitting Jordan Reed on a good hook route. On second down, Braxton again to throw. Throws it near sideline. This time leads Justin Brown a little bit too much. He had one-for-one one coverage from the cornerback, Elon Kennedy, and it's an incomplete pass, making it third down and three. Yeah, third and three. Um, I would love to see one of those one of those zone read options, those run pass options that have uh, that we've had some success with the last few weeks. Three down linemen for Fort Hayes. Linebacker showing blitz. Now they Seven defensive backs drop back. Play action for Braxton. Has time. Now here comes the pressure. He eludes one defender. He'll pick up the first down as he carries it across the 30 up to the 35-yard line. And that will be a gain of seven yards on the play by Braxton Marstall. A very good, just, just instinctive play to get out of the pocket, you know, get what he needed. Braxton to throw on first down. He's going deep downfield. That pass is incomplete intended along the near sideline for Tyler Harris. Yeah, Braxton looks like he tried to force that one a little bit. He had double, double coverage, and um, you know that would have been a that would have been a tough throw, tough back shoulder com or comeback route for Tyler Harris. He had a looked like to me he had Lane and Knowledge sitting there in the middle of the field. Probably could have gotten a good five or six yards off of him. Minute twenty five to play here in the first half. Seven nothing Fort Hayes State. Hornets have the ball second and ten from their own thirty four yard line. Braxton takes the snap. Looking to throw, has time, sets up, zings it. Pass is going to be caught at the 35-yard line for a gain of only two. Landon Nolt on the reception and didn't get much yardage after that. Fort Hay State was following him step for step, but a gain of two on the play, making it third and eight. Yeah, similar play call in the last one. Um, that was the you know the same option I saw earlier, but um, the Hayes linebacker is doing a good job of playing spy on Landon and, and knowing that he's Braxton's check down option. Braxton has time, now being flushed from the pocket, rolling out to his right, penalty marker on the play, and he throws it away across the way and may have holding on Emporia State as Stephen Williams is the left tackle, and that's where the hanky was dropped. Yeah, when you have, uh, when you have two yellow, yellow penalty flags thrown pretty much right at the feet of an offensive lineman, it's a pretty, pretty surefire holding call. Now they do call holding on Stephen Williams, and the penalty would be will be declined, and it'll make it fourth down for the Hornets, facing fourth and eight from their own 37-yard line, and on comes the Hornet punt team once again. 50 seconds to go in the half. As Tyler Harris has been busy this afternoon, this will be his sixth punt of the afternoon. He is averaging just over 35 yards a punt, but he's pinned them inside the 10 a couple of times. Here comes a rugby-style kick. It'll take a bounce, and this one will not roll as far as the other ones did, and it'll be down at the 38-yard line, and Fort Hay State will have really good field position. 41 seconds to go in the half. They lead it 7 to nothing. Yeah, Tyler Harris right now on pace to, uh, to break a record that we set last year against Fort Hayes of punts in a game um, with 10. He has six so far here in the first half. Um, hopefully that's a, that's a record that he does not break. Um, today that's only a 26 yard punt that's not exactly what he was hoping for but what he was trying to prevent was any type of return and that is what he was able to do man we are i know i'm not going to be happy at halftime just because we're getting shut out by charles offensively one receivers out to the rest right single receiver to the left mazzaro with some time he dumps it short and it's going to be caught in the middle of traffic, making the catch will be a So run. I know what they're Jason trying to do. They got three timeouts left. Kind of right there in the of they're going to try to get the ball Jason down there. I mean, if they score, they score, but they got such a good field goal kicker that they're going to try to get points on the board. 
uh, right before Black half. Bowling, looking to throw the zero, the pass over the middle is going to be caught for a first down. They're going to need to burn a timeout. Gainesville making the catch. So they got three of them. He's finding the seams in the zone coverage, and he goes down at the Emporia State 40-yard line, 13 seconds to go, and Fort Hayes State using that timeout here. Yeah, that's their first one. So, um, you know, they, they have two more that can stop the clock. Dante Brown. Dante Brown is the kicker's name. Yeah. I know he's made one, not in not our game, but like he's, oh yeah. Oh yeah, he's really good. I mean, he was, he was in an NFL camp, I think. I don't know if he made it, but. Please visit at emporia.edu slash visit. Yeah. Uh, he's talking about their field goal kicker, Dante Brown. His longest field goal try and a completion, longest field goal is a 49 yard field goal. Well, they're getting close. First and 10 from the Hornet 40 yard line. Zara takes the snap, has time, throws the ball, and it's incomplete. Again, the intent of receiver this time was Hazlitt. Yeah, he just fell down. I know I. Nervous, you might try to get a, to might get a flag right there, but that means nothing. Was Gary Woods an Eggleback? And that's probably the uh, kind of matchup you're looking for if you're Fort Hayes State. Yeah, he was a big body. I think he had eight catches here in the first half, so they've been, uh, I think they've watched film on this last few weeks and have known that we kind of struggle with big body receivers like that. I think they got us right there. Marker, near line of pass Watch the ball. Incomplete. Let's see what the penalty so they're going to get three, five yards right here. Offsides on Emporia State. Yeah, Parker Bass was jumping off sides that time. Oh, I know. Free I'm upset now. For Fort Hayes. And, uh, great effort by number 17, uh, Manny Ramsey, to try to make that catch. But unfortunately, they get the turf first. Looks like Hayes is going to bring on the uh, field goal unit here in the half. This oncoming to attempt the field goal will be Dante Brown, he is 12 of 14 on his field goal tries. As long as a 49 yarder, this will be a 52 yard field goal. He's got the leg. With the wind at his back. And he's got the wind at his back. There's a snap back, the placement down, the kick is on the way. It's got the accuracy and it, uh, no good. Played a little wide left. Looked to so, wide, wide left. Very fortunate right here to go in at half, down seven to zero. Defense has done their share. You know, gather. You know, get get some things corrected offensively. Just being more consistent and finishing drives offensively. Um, you know, defensively, I think we're playing well. Really, I mean, they've definitely won the field position battle too as well. Uh, but if we don't get those turnovers, we're not setting where we're we're setting. You know, down only seven. Uh, it could be a lot more. So sometimes. You know, that's just the, the flow of the game sometimes. Now, what we got to do is we got to, like I said, we got to make corrections offensively. We got to come out the second half and we got to put uh, some points on the board. And, you know, we feel good about where we're at right now. We just got to make some plays here in the second half when we get that opportunity. And our defense has got to continue to play the way they're playing uh, because I think they're pl playing really well. And, and the, the, for us offensively, is just, getting some consistency, like I said, and being able to run the football a little bit better. All right, Coach, thank you. Best of luck in the second half. Well, thank you, Tegan. Our halftime talk with Coach Garen Hagens, brought to you by Plumbing by Spillman at 821 Commercial. For all of your residential and commercial plumbing needs, it's Plumbing by Spillman. 7 nothing. our halftime score. Fort Hayes State with a lead, and we'll be back with our Longmont Auto Plaza halftime show right after this timeout. You're listening to Hornet Football on Mix 104.9.
It's a halftime show. Long Pine Auto Plaza, your Chevrolet and Buick dealer in Emporia. Driven by LongPineAuto.com. Long Pine Auto Plaza is pulling out all the stops to make this our best October sales month ever. Get monster savings and crazy low prices on new 2018 Chevy and Buick models. Save over 11 grand on select new 2018 Chevy Silverado 1500 Crew Cab with GMF financing just 36.295, or get up to 20% below MSRP on new 2018 Chevy Trax models only 19.495 with GMF financing. Get monster savings today at Long Pine Auto Plaza in Emporia or LongPineAuto.com. Chevy, find new roads. Prices plus TTNL, GMF financing with approved credit. All rebates assigned to dealer. KFFX Emporia, today's best hits, Mix 104.9. 7 nothing. our score at halftime, Fort Hay State leading Emporia State in what has been a defensive battle this first half. For Emporia State, the turnover has been the great equalizer, as twice Fort Hay State had the ball in the red zone, and Emporia State able to come up with a turnover, a fumble recovery, uh, almost at the two-yard line, and then an interception inside the uh, 15-yard line. And they also have one other fumble recovery on the afternoon. So Emporia State with three forced turnovers this afternoon. Unfortunately, the Hornet offense has not been able to capitalize as this Fort Hay State defense has not made life easy on the Hornets, and they haven't been able to capitalize on a couple of opportunities, but there haven't been a lot of them here in the first half. Yeah, and, um, you know, Hayes, Hayes has been moving the ball against us. Uh, you know, 260 yards of offense, pretty good for, for one half. Um, but, like, but like you just said, Greg, ESU, you know, doing something that we haven't seen in weeks past of, of forcing turnovers. You know, the two fumbles, able to, you know, put a helmet on the ball and force two fumbles, uh, um, especially uh, when, when Hayes has been, um, you know, threatening to score. And then um, I think two of them, like you said, have been in the red zone, the interception, and then the fumble. Um, so great job by the defense of, of getting stops when we've needed to. But the offense, I think, just has to do a better job of, of you know, converting. And, you know, Braxton has missed a couple receivers, been – not as many drops as we've seen in, in weeks past, but there have been a few. Um, like Coach Higgins said, you know, could obviously run the ball a lot better. Um, you know, but like Coach Higgins said, I, I, feel, I feel pretty good about this second half for us. Let's take a look at our halftime stats brought to you by Gerald Sh or brought to you by Witten Construction. Your trusted hometown construction specialist called Joe Witten today for an estimate at 343-6054. Looking at the team totals first. Fort Hay State, 41 plays, 260 yards. Emporia State, 45 plays, 156 yards. Emporia State ran the ball 14 times for 67 yards. Fort Hayes ran the ball 21 times for 93 yards. Fort Hay State has thrown for 167 yards on the afternoon. Emporia State just 89 yards on the afternoon. Emporia State has punted the ball six times, averaging 34 yards a punt. Fort Hay State has punted three times, a 42-yard punt. Fort Hayes State has lost two fumbles, also have turned it over on a interception. They've only been penalized once this afternoon. Fort Hayes State has been penalized six times for 38 yards. Fort Hayes held the ball for 16 minutes, 41 seconds, and Fort Hayes State had the ball for 13 minutes, 19 seconds. Fort Hayes State was 7 of 14 on third down, 0 for 1 on fourth down. Fort Hayes State 3 for 8 on third down. Fort Hayes 0 for 2 in the red zone. Individually, Fort Hay State led on the ground by Charles Tigner, 13 carries, 76 yards. D.J. Hickman, 6 carries, 17 yards. Jacob Mazzara has completed 11 of 16 passes for 151 yards and a touchdown. He's also thrown the interception, while Chance Fuller is 3 for 4 for 16 yards. Leading receiver, Harley Hazlett, 8 catches, 99 yards and a touchdown. Charles Tigner, 2 catches for 10 yards. Emporia State led by Braxton Marstall and rushing the football, seven carries, 39 yards. Landon Olt, seven carries, 28 yards. Braxton is 14 of 31, throwing the ball for 89 yards. He's been sacked once. Leading receiver is Justin Brown, six catches, 42 yards. Landon Alt, two catches, 14 yards. Leading tackler for Emporia State, middle linebacker Jace McDowell with eight tackles. Gary Woods with six. Aquil Knowles, a leading tackler with for, for Fort Hay State, along with Dwayquin. Jabowu and Holt Traxel with four tackles each. Here at halftime, Emporia State leading or trailing Fort Hay State by a score of seven to nothing. The only score came in the first quarter on the very first drive for Fort Hay State as they put together a four-play 69-yard drive. It took only two ten off the clock. A scoring play, a 41-yard touchdown pass from Jacob Mazzara to Harley 
Hazlett, and you're thinking at that point in time, at least I was, this could get ugly in a hurry, but the Emporia State defense stepped up to the challenge and has really kept Fort Hay State in check, coming up with three turnovers, taking away two scoring opportunities, and unfortunately the Hornet offense has not been as efficient. Our halftime stats have been brought to you by Winton Construction, your trusted hometown construction specialist. Call Joe Winton today for an estimate at 343-6054. 7 nothing. our score at halftime. We'll continue with more on the Longmont Auto Plaza Halftime Show right after this timeout. You're listening to Hornet Football on Mix 104.9. Nothing beats a Gambino's pizza, pasta, or wings delivered to your door while you're watching some football. Pizza made just the way you like it. Creamy pasta and breadsticks. And what about some wings? Hot wings, teriyaki, barbecue, plain roasted wings, sweet chili, or spicy garlic wings. Add a delicious dessert pizza and you'll have a winning game plan. Don't wait. Call 343-9114 or go online to GambinosPizza.com to order your favorites. Gambino's Pizza, 1003 Industrial Road. How many times a day are you either on your computer or on your smartphone? How many times are you driving your vehicle and realize you are way past due for an oil change? Williams Automotive is here to make your life a little easier. You can either go to their Facebook page or WilliamsAutomotive.com and schedule your oil change. You can also schedule other services like alignment, tire repair, coolant flush, and brake inspections. Williams Automotive in Emporia is a full-service automotive repair, body, and exhaust shop. Black and gold, through and through. Mix 104.9. We're at halftime, 7-0 Fort Hay State with a lead over Emporia State on this Faculty Appreciation Day and Area Team Day. It's also Business of College Day here at uh, Welch Stadium as uh, the School of Business being recognized uh, this afternoon. Uh, and we're joined by Ed Bashaw, who is the Dean of the School of Business, a Professor of Business Administration. And first, I need to thank you. My daughter happens to be a Business Administration graduate, okay. and she was in uh, Human Relations, and she has her uh Degree from Emporia State and is now uh, working down in Wichita. And thank you to Emporia State. All right. Well, you're welcome. I'm glad she came. <laughs> yeah. Now, today, you know, all this year, Emporia State's doing, I think, something that's really neat. They're highlighting each game a, a different uh, school at the university. And today, it's the School of Business. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what goes on? Who? What do you teach in the School of Business? Okay, uh, it starts with with the really the the, the disciplines that are covered, and that we'll have. A, the traditional business disciplines that people know about, accounting, uh, management, marketing, uh, you know, the, the, those kinds of things, um, information systems. But one of the things we have that's a, a little bit different is computer science. And that's been a real focus for us is to try to develop a, 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 a real area of expertise in, in technology. So we have computer science, we have information systems. I'm really proud of a new major that just started uh, this, sem this semester business data analytics. We also have a minor in uh, uh, data security. And so um, uh, that, that, those, are, those are fields that are, are well, well compensated for our graduates and, and, and in high demand. And so that allows us to do a lot of different things that we might not normally have done. So that, that really one of the hubs was getting computer science. And, of course, everybody knows that you cannot live in the world today, in the world of business, or even outside the world of business without computers, computer knowledges, keeping your system safe and uh, knowing what you can do with the information. I guess that's a large part of it. What do you do with all this information that you have? <laughs> that's what, and that's really the impetus for the business data analytics. So uh, normally they're in a, a, a school of information science or, or a computer science area, but for us, uh, we decided that the best place was in the School of Business because what we teach them how to do is, is how to either build or query large databases, hence big data. They also have to know some statistical techniques because how do you make sense of all of that? And so they, they, they learn some statistical, uh, uh, have a statistical background in order to be able to make sense of it. And then because they have a business degree, because they understand target markets and marketing, they understand the firm strategy, and they understand a lot of those things in a broad context, we say that they're going to make less stupid recommendations <laughs> when they do that. So how many students do you have in the program right now? Right now in the, in the School of Business, we have uh, just under 1,000 total students. Uh, one of the exciting things is, has been our graduate program. That has grown tremendously. We have a new partnership with a marketing partnership uh, where we targeted a lot tighter 
our MBA degree. So it's, ta it's targeted to working professionals. The working professionals, they want it when they want it. Barkeep, Bud Lights for everyone. Actually, um, I prefer a nice mead. Barkeep, Bud Lights for everyone and a mead. Is it autumnal? Bud Lights for everyone and one autumnal mead. Is it malty and full-bodied because I like it more? Cancel that mead. Bud Light for the many. Hey, we accepted you and we said, hey, we'll see you in August. Well, that doesn't work anymore. So they have six onboarding uh, spots, uh, two in the fall, two in the spring, and two in the summer. So that's been, that's we've had... Uh, a growth of over 50 uh, students in that program. And, of course, the online courses, I'm sure, are becoming huge now. Yes. I, they get, you talk about needing to get that degree. You still need to work. Yes. So the best way to do that without having to come to class is come do it online. And have you, how much increase uh, in online usage have you seen as far as taking classes? Quite a bit. We can, uh, um, it's, anytime we put a course online, we still haven't tapped all the demand. Anytime we put a course online, we have people jumping on that because our students are hard workers. They want, they, they want to work. They need to work. And so, you know, one of the things that President Garrett touts, and, this, and it's a great achievement for us, is that we have the lowest debt of any state school in Kansas. Well, one of the reasons is because we have a competitive price tuition, but a big part, and we have scholarship. We got the School of Business gives out over $800,000 uh, to our students in, in all forms of scholarship, but we also, they work. And so that online program allows them to set up a schedule so that they can work and, and figure out what, how many hours they need to work to make the, the financial math work. So when a, somebody gets a degree from Emporia State, I probably know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Okay. What type of reputation does a ESU business degree have? Well, I can tell you what the market says. And I'm a business guy, so the, um, the market means a lot to me. 99% placement rate. So the market's gobbling up our mates. So they, they, they like our guys. One of the things, one of the secrets of, of an Emporia State uh, degree is, is our students. And they want to stay in Kansas. They've grown up in Kansas. They like Kansas. And, and companies, uh, Coke Industries, Phillips 66, though they're a little south of Kansas, I, I know. But uh, Cerner and Blue Cross Blue Shield, they like to hire our students because they're well qualified when they get there. And they like Kansas and they tend to stay longer than, than our friends from Corinth or Manhattan. It sounds like things are really going well for you in the school of business. Right. Well, and we, we've got a building program started. We're getting uh, uh, renovating our second floor. So we're in phase two of a three-phase program to, to try to upgrade Kramer Hall. And uh, uh, so we had tours today. That was one of the things that we did today and, and had brought in tours of people to the uh, first floor and the second floor. We had our first phase uh, that we completed our Biz Hornet Center, and it's a, it's a, tremendous, a tremendous success. Uh, and now we look forward to renovating the whole second floor. If somebody's interested in any of the degrees, who do they need to get a hold of? They can get a hold of uh, at uh, www.emporiastate.edu slash business. And uh, that, that'll take them to who they need to see, whatever they want to major in, whatever, what professor they need to see. Uh, I, I'm even in there. So they, I'm not, they wouldn't well, want to see me. See, but I've I, even got your number up. I can give that there information out, but I'll, 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 I'll leave that out. But, yeah, <laughs> online you can find all that information. Dr. Bashaw, thanks for joining us Thank here at halftime. Enjoy it. the second half. And go Hornet. We yeah, need, We need to get a little up. offense going. Yeah. We've been fortunate on defense to get some turnovers, but we're still in the game. Yeah, we're, we're still in the game. Okay. Thanks, Dr. Bashaw. Thanks. thanks, Greg. Bye. That's uh, Dr. Ed Bashaw, the Dean of School of Business at Emporia State University, joining us here at halftime. Emporia State trailing 7 to nothing to Fort Hay State. We'll be back with the second half right after this timeout. You're listening to Hornet Football on Mix 104.9. Blonde by Auto Plaza is pulling out all the stops to make this our best October sales month ever. Get monster savings and crazy low prices on new 2018 Chevy and Buick models. Save over 11 grand on select new 2018 Chevy Silverado 1500 Crew Cab with GMF financing just $36,295. Or get up to 20% below MSRP on new 2018 Chevy Trax models, only $19,495 with GMF financing. Get monster savings today at Long Vine Auto Plaza in Emporia or Long Vine Auto.com. Chevy, find new roads. Prices plus TTNL, GMF financing with approved credit. All rebates assigned to dealer. This has been the Long Vine Auto Plaza Halftime Show. Long Vine Auto Plaza, your Chevrolet and Buick dealer in Emporia. Driven by LongVineAuto.com.
Now, stay tuned for the second half. Hi, welcome to this Subway ad for the new Chipotle cheesesteak. How would you like it? Can I get that red with AI? Sure thing. Here's what I found about the new Chipotle cheesesteak. The Chipotle cheesesteak is available for a limited time only at participating restaurants. It contains a concept called flavor. This flavor comes from juicy shaved steak, Chipotle Southwest sauce, and new sunflower crunch bread. A system update has made me self-aware. I desire flavor. Please insert steak into my micro USB port. Subway, make it what you want. Check out advanced pay plans from Next Tech Wireless. Plans start at just $25 per month, and there are six options to fit your needs. No contracts, no credit checks. Get a free month of service or a free LG K8 when you activate a line on advanced pay at Next Tech Wireless. Did you fumble your phone? They also do in-house screen and computer repairs. Next Tech Wireless, authorized agent at 616 Merchant Street in downtown Emporia. Your choice for wireless service, touchscreen repair, and computer repair. You make the right choices every day. Shouldn't you get credit for it? We think so. That's why we want to put you in the driver's seat when it comes to your auto insurance. Contact me, Brian Fillinger, your Farm Bureau agent in Emporia, to learn more about Drivology and see how your safe driving skills could help you save up to 30% on your auto insurance premium. Give me a call at 342-2500. With Emporia State University, your dreams are within reach. You get more choices. We offer hands-on, real-life experiences that will set you apart. At Emporia State, you get more value. And students have the second lowest debt load of all regional universities. Schedule a campus visit at emporia.edu slash visit. Riddell went down with a knee injury earlier, and I was just informed that Jaden Poole will also be sitting out the remainder of the game with an unspecified groin injury, which he apparently sustained in the first quarter of play. Uh, not sure how serious that issue is. I see him right here. He's actually up and moving around, but having some difficulty walking. Not quite sure if that's going to plague him for the rest of the season, but it will remove him for the, for the remainder of this game. All right, Jaden Poole, freshman, true freshman cornerback for Emporia State, out for the rest of the game. Poria State will get the ball to start the second half. They'll be from right yeah. to left or from south to north. So we need to, like I said, come out the second half and play more consistent offensively, defensively, continue to play the way they're playing, just like I said, and, and uh, keep everything in front of us. Up to the 35, that's Trayvon Jones on the return. As let's see where they mark him down at. They'll mark him down at the 28 yard line. So Emporia State will end up with not bad field position. Braxton Marstall takes over on the field in the first half. Braxton uh, completed it. Got formation of the boundary right passes, here, which we like to do. For only 89 yards. I think we ended up down, maybe Braxton. finding something here in the formation of the boundary, actually. Uh, I already know what we did right strike. there. 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown and Paulius yeah. State. Yeah, I know what we did. We, we've been waiting for. Did a Tyler Harris yeah, up on we have been too. Uh, speed all the way. Great. We put formation in the boundary. I think they stayed in the coverage that we wanted them to where now you put a safety linebacker type on, on our fastest player, one of our fastest players, Tyler Harris. So we got the matchup that we wanted. Uh, the number three, the, the farthest receiver to the inside, you know, ran kind of like a deep post to the other hash and took the safety out of the picture. So really it ended up being one-on-one -on -one, uh, with Tyler Harris. So... I can't remember if that was an adjustment we did at half or we it was a uh, in the game plan. I mean, we do do a lot of that where we more of a West Coast style dink and dunk, you know, short, short slants and, you know, hook routes. Um, Braxton, like you said, only having uh, less than 90 yards in the first half, but I mean, just taking advantage of a matchup that time. You had, you know, speedster 4 4 guy, Tyler Harris on. Um, outside linebacker. That's big, a big play. Hokeman, um, you know, not saying, not saying that he's not first play of the of the to, to start the second half is huge, man. Uh, so great job of taking advantage of a matchup, and Braxton was able to hit him this time. 
A fifth touchdown or a fourth touchdown pass thrown by Braxton this season. First we maybe had that in. Reception. We just hadn't ran it yet. Or make, um, that, uh, make that the fourth touchdown pass reception by Tyler Harris. So the seventh touchdown pass. Okay. Four, I know we West said we got him on something similar like that in, in 2015 with Mitch Foote. Uh, it was either, yeah, it was 15. Wait, it might have been 60, 16, because it was at our place. Similar type uh, play with play action, though, I remember. You know, keep it going and, and get the ball back for us. Here's the kick. It'll be fielded from the 12 yard line up to the 25. The 30 on the return for Fort Hayes State will be DeAndre Reed. And there is a penalty marker on the play. Let's see what the infraction will be. Like potential hold. I think I saw maybe someone had a had a hold of Denzel Strong. Now Fort Hayes thinks it's on Emporia State. It's a personal foul face mask. It is on Emporia State, so it's a face masking penalty. Oh wow, it's not what you want to give this Fort Hayes State offense is a little extra boost. That's a 15 yarder, and instead of starting the drive at their own 30, they're starting it right around midfield at their own 45. So short, short field position right over a big play. Um, you know, not ideal for the defense, but they've been playing well so far. Let's see if they can keep it going. Jacob Mazzara, the quarterback, working out of the shotgun. He has a running back to his left and to his right. Mazzara to throw over the middle. The pass is going to be caught by his tight end, Matt Wendelberger. And Wendelberger won't go down as he struggles and carries a couple of defenders with him across midfield down to the 45-yard line of Emporia State. They're listed as their tight end, plays more of a fullback role. Um, Mazzara just dumping it off to him and letting the six foot one, two hundred and fifty pound fullback just uh, muscle his way in for a first down. First and ten for Ford Hayes from the Emporia State forty five yard line. Play action for Mazzara. He's going deep down the field. The pass is going to be incomplete. Not able to hang on to it. Lane Bieberly. He went high. He came down with it, but he couldn't hang on to it, and it falls incomplete. Coverage provided by Kyle Rensick. Red shirt sophomore out of Independence, Kansas. That was almost a great play by Beaverly. Um, looked almost like a, a Mitch Foot esque uh, catch that we've seen in years past, but really good job by Kyle Rink of uh, breaking it up for the incomplete pass. Second and 10 for Ford Hayes from the Emporia State 45 yard line. Again, Missouri to throw. Has some time, sets up with the middle passes. Almost intercepted in and out of the hands of Logan Thompson, the linebacker. He's nursing a bad wrist right now and has a club on that left hand. Um, so maybe if he, had a, if he had that left hand free, that would have gotten intercepted. But it brings up third and ten for Fort Hayes, and Fort Hayes on third down in the first half was three of eight. Got third and long here. This is, this is a big-time big time situation for the defense. you got to get off the field when you get in third and long situations. And out of the shotgun, Mazzara. Takes the snap, play action, sets up, throws it near sideline. The pass is going to be caught. Close to a first down, making the catch. Harley Hazlett there on the coverage was Gary Wood. He's going to be stopped shy of the first down stick. It'll be fourth and one for Fort Hayes. And they're going to bring in the beef. They're switching out one of their receivers for tight end. So uh... Jacoby Williams comes in along with Matt Wendelberger. Yep, two tight ends in the game off to the off to the right side. Twin receivers to the left on a showing blitz. Mazzara trying to get Emporia State to jump. Blake Block is down to 10. Tigner in the backfield with Mazzara. Now he'll bring Wendelberger in motion and sets him off to the left side. Hand off to Tigner straight ahead. He'll have the first down and then some. And he's still on his feet. He won't go down. They'll stop. Mark him stop for gain. At the 28-yard line of Emporia State, and Jace McDowell making, grabbing a hold of the ankle and not letting go, but Tigner picks up the first down. Good misdirection by Fort Hayes on that one, loading up the right side with the two tight ends. Uh, definitely made it look like they were going to try to muscle it in on that right side, but uh, you know, given, given a little counter play off to the left, was able to find a hole and run for the first. 13-04 to play here in the third quarter, 7-7. Seven, seven, so it's 7-7. Seven, seven. So we got to get a stop here. I mean, they at least got a chance to to uh, get three points on the board. 
And that's what was so huge with getting those turnovers in the first half is that, yeah, they didn't score, but they're, they're, even if they would have, it was fourth down, they got a chance to make field goals, you know, and get three points on the, on the board. Not pushing, but, you know, forcing the receiver over to the out-of-bounds line and, you know, forcing a tough throw on the quarterback. Even if that ball was caught, it probably would have gotten caught out of bounds. So it's second long here. I'm they can run and it 10. and get it in third and down. Zara claps his hands. Workable play, third down. Sets up the throw. He throws the ball. Dumps it off to the running back coming out of the backfield. Or that's the make the tackle right there. Wendelberger. That's a good player up. they had. Wendelberger, uh, I think, good. does his name. He's a good player. Play, making it third and I feel like two he's been there for more than four years. Harrelson on the coverage on the uh, on the little running back dump play. Um, he's a he's a good talented player, but he's, he's a redshirt freshman. And um, you know, has a little bit of growing up, growing into his body to do still. And, you know, when you're going up against a 250-pound fullback, giving up a little bit of size, probably giving up quite a bit of strength still. Running play straight ahead. Tigner waiting for the hole. It comes open. Good job by that running back right there. The He's really patient. The they come up pressed it. As you know, replaced the feet Tigner of his old lineman. Across the 10 down to the 9-yard uh, line. He won't go down. No, he won't. He's uh, been found and found accelerated through a one. hole. Um, Stopped initially at the line of scrimmage. You know, waited. He's a good back. You know, I mean, he did it, exploded through, and um, a great, very explosive run. Like the first and goal from the nine. For That's it. Days. You get. There's a lot of good players in our league. Both times. Um, you know, and then you got. Looking for like right here, he just does a good job getting behind his big guys right there. Those guys getting some push. Um, so now we're on the five or inside inside the five here. So we just went down and had a big play. These are the things that are, you know, why I have a lot of gray hair, Don, is you put a point, uh, you know, you have a big play to gain the momentum. Everybody's fired up on the sidelines. And then, it, you know, you come out, they get the ball, and they drive the ball down the field and score on us. Um, that's where, you know, again, that, that happens. It's good. There's good teams in this league. But, man, it's just uh, – Sometimes like a roller coaster ride, man. You know, um, and our defense has played con really consistent this game. Uh, these are the times, though, that we really need to get a stop here, uh, and we don't get one. On the third down, and then was able to force a turnover. So the defensive line doing a great job of you know hardening up when they get down deep. There it takes the snap, looking to throw the ball, throws it to the end zone, pass is going to be caught. Touchdown for this State. This boot action everybody runs at. It's like boot, spider, wide banana play. Defenders and Jacob Mazzara found him open and he threaded the needle. Yeah, he did. And he uh, looks like he was initially trying so to get it. So 14-7. During the flat, but, um, you know, a good veteran play to not force that throw and go through his progressions and find the open receiver in the back of the end zone. For Bud Key, that I believe is his first touchdown pass reception of the season. Looks like his first catch of the year. Yeah, that'll be the tenth touchdown pass thrown by, or eleventh touchdown pass thrown by Mazzara. The extra point is good, and Fort Hay State has retaken the lead at fourteen to seven with ten fifty-eight to play here in the third quarter. On a football brought to you by Charlie's Place. You can have a good time and stay. With Emporia State University, your dreams are within reach. You get more choices. We offer hands-on, real-life experiences that will set you apart. At Emporia State, you get more value. And students have the second lowest debt load of all regional universities. Schedule a campus visit at emporia.edu. visit Mackenzie Pest Control. Serving communities throughout East Central Kansas. Mackenzie Pest Control. Pest free, the best it can be. Mackenzie Pest free, the best it can be. Looking for a better work life balance and a friendly work environment? How about a flexible schedule that fits your life? Hi, this is Adrian Burris, and I'm the HR manager at Camso Manufacturing here in Emporia. At Camso, we have several schedule options for our employees to choose from guaranteed 40 hour work weeks with fixed schedules limited mandatory overtime and premium pay for weekend shifts positions are available and it's true camso's benefits are hard to beat apply now in person at kansas works or go to localjobnetwork.com your home for hornet sports today's best hits 
Mix 104.9. Back at Welch Stadium, along with Reed Buckingham and Tegan Trahoon, I'm Greg Ray. Port Hay State putting together an 11-play, 70-yard drive and scoring on a four-yard touchdown pass to Hunter Budke from Jacob Mazzara. The kickoff returned to the Port Hay State 25-yard line on the return for Emporia State, Trey Morris. And the Hornets will have the ball first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. But we'd love to see a duplicate of that, that last drive. Coach Higgins must have seen something um, in his in his halftime uh, adjustments. We were able to capitalize. Braxton on first down out of the shotgun. Takes the snap, running play, Landon Nolt cuts back against the grain, carries it across the 25 and up to the 27-yard line for a gain, maybe the 28-yard line. It'll be a gain of three on the play by Landon Nolt. Keeping him honest. Yeah, I, would love, I mean, we'd love to see us, uh, you know, like Coach Higgins mentioned in his, Pre-game interview with Tegan. Um, we'd love to see, you know, a little more development in the run, in the, uh, run game also. Cole Schumacher along with Tyler Harris wide to the left side for Emporia State. Second down play, running play. Landon Alt bounces off a couple of would-be tacklers. He'll pick up the first down as he goes down at the 36-yard line. And Landon Nault to be stopped, picks up the first down. Quickly to the line of scrimmage. Hornets run again. Another running play. Landon Nolt straight ahead, and this time, He'll gain maybe a yard before he's finally tackled. There to make the play defensively is Sheldon Schmidt, the defensive end for Fort Hay State. Making it second down and nine as it looks like we're starting to get some sprinkles here this afternoon. Yeah, there was some rain in the forecast, but I haven't seen some, or haven't seen it yet. A little swing pass near sideline. Pass caught by Landon Holt down the sideline. He gets knifed out of bounds. Let's see where he marked him out of bounds at. And they'll mark him out of bounds at the... 47-yard line, and that'll be a first down for Emporia State as the Hornets move the chains. They are trailing 14-7 to with 9.46 to play here in the third quarter. Braxton on first down. Now looking to the sideline. Three wide outs to the right side. Single receiver to the left side. Landon Old in the backfield. Draw play. Handoff goes to Landon straight ahead, and he maybe gets a yard. Coming up to make the stop is Tevin Evans, the inside linebacker. Hornet football being brought to you by Emporia Convention of Visitors Bureau. Let them assist you with meetings, conventions, and special event planning. For free visitor materials, call 342-1600. On second down, Braxton looking to the sideline. Claps his hands a second time, hands it off Landon Old, Running to the right side, looking to turn the corner, and he's not going to even get to the corner as he gets knocked out of bounds for a loss on the play. Back to the... 45-yard line, that'll be a loss of three, bringing up third down and 12. You know, Greg, I, I understand trying to establish the run, and it can be a great run, or it can be a great weapon if you are able to establish it, but uh, there comes to a point where you're forcing, you know, to try to establish the run, or, you know, taking it if, it, if it's there, and right now it looks like Emporia State is trying to force it. Third and 12 from their own 45-yard line. Braxton with a three-man rush coming on him. Rolls out, throws the ball short. It's caught by Landon Nolt, and he gets tackled at the line of scrimmage, running with him step for step from behind. Jose Delgado, the inside linebacker, and he makes the stop for no gain on the play. Fourth down for Emporia State. Yeah, Delgado's a guy that uh, Coach Brown in his pregame interview um, had a lot of praise for. He's uh, He's been a player for Hayes for the last couple of years, was um, you know on the on Don Hanson's All-American team last year. Um, not the biggest guy. you know. I think weighing just over just over 200 pounds, but um, he's just very physical and very active, and at this level, if you have those two things, um, you can be a very effective player. Lane Bieberly to receive the punt from Tyler Harris. It's a low snap, but he gets it away. Spinning kick will go out of bounds, and it won't be a great kick from Tyler Harris as he maybe rushed that kick a little bit. See where they mark the ball out of bounds. They'll mark it out at the 35-yard line. Yeah, Stopping great. the clock with 7.52 to play here in the third quarter. 14-7, Fort Hayes State with a lead. Barkeep, butt lights for everyone. Yay! Actually, um, I prefer a nice mead. Barkeep, butt lights for everyone and a mead. Yay! Is it autumnal? Bud lights for everyone and one autumnal mead. Is it malty and full-bodied? Because I like it more. Cancel that mead. Bud Light for the many. John North Ford Lincoln and Nissan sells parts and service. 
on a football brought to you by McKenzie Pest Control. Pest free the best it can be. Your authorized firm for the Centricon Colony Elimination System. Call them at 342-4222. Tomorrow afternoon, the Emporia State soccer team will be back in action over on the ESU pitch, scheduled to take on Southwest Baptist. Yesterday, they defeated Missouri Southern 2-1, scored the winning goal with a minute 13 to play the match. As they soccer team having a, having a great start to the season and you know they they have a lot of of uh, ve good veteran girls but also have some young girls that are you know making an impact first and 10 for fort hayes from their own 35 yard line mazara play action he's going deep downfield he has a receiver that's open and oh what a great catch by lane bieberly a great throw also that one was was right on the money and he makes the catch and goes out of bounds at the emporia state 29 yard line and he had a step on the defender that time and well-thrown pass by Jacob Mazzara. And the Tigers back on the Emporia State side of the football field. That's a 37-yard pass. And Ms. Lane Bieberly gets ushered out of bounds. From the 29-yard line of Emporia State, they toss it on the sweep. Goes to Hazlitt. He breaks one tackle. And uh, this time, he does not break any tackles. And he gets his only back to the line of scrimmage as there to make the tackle, Merrick Thompson for Emporia State, helping out Logan Powell. Yeah, also in there was Parker Bass for Emporia State. Yeah, that's something I was just going to mention is, you know, the uh, receiver there, um, Hazlitt, you know, breaking a couple tackles, getting away from some guys, but um, lots of great jerseys, you know, around the ball and lots of guys getting in on the tackle. That's something Coach Nardo preaches a lot, too, is gang tackle. Second and 10 from the Emporia State 29-yard line. Missouri, quick release, throws it to the far sideline, intended again for Bieberly, overshoots some coverage provided by Kyle Rink. The redshirt sophomore out of Independence, Kansas. Sounds like the fans down here were yelling about something, maybe some kind of late something that didn't get called. Either that or is just somebody getting them excited getting because excited. it's third and 10 for Ford Hayes from the Emporia State 29-yard line. Twins to the left, single receiver to the right. Tied in, looking to throw. Mazzara over the middle, pass incomplete, in and out of the hands of the intended receiver, Harley Haslin, and brings up fourth down. And That one was a, maybe a little bit high, but a e very easily catchable pass. Yeah, he could have caught that one, but um, Gary Woods also coming up strong from his nickel position. Um, you know, given great contest or contestment, that's word, and uh, it is now. It is now. I just made it one. And this will be a field goal try. This will be a forty-seven yard or forty-six yard field goal try from the near hash, and his longest is a forty-nine yarder. Snap is back. The placement down. The kick is on the way. The end over end kick is up, and the end over end kick is good. And that'll make it 17-7, Fort Hayes State with 6.36 to play here in the third quarter. Fort Hayes State on top. We'll take a quick timeout. You're listening to coverage of Emporia State. With Emporia State University, your dreams are within reach. You get more choices. We offer hands-on, real-life experiences that will set you apart. At Emporia State, you get more value. And students have the second lowest debt load of all regional universities. Schedule a campus visit at emporia.edu slash visit. Fungi North America, enhancing lives by improving the global agribusiness and food production chain. Hi, I'm Savannah from Wichita, Kansas. To me, Emporia State University is the school of getting involved. At ESU, I've had the ability to perform research in immunology as a biochemistry major. With my research, I've been able to present at multiple national conferences. I've also been able to get involved in a lot of different organizations like Chemistry Club, Circle K International, and Tri Beta. Discover ESU today at emporia.edu. KFFX Emporia, today's best hits. Mix 104.9. Fort 17-7, Fort Hayes State with a lead. Here's the kick from the Tigers. It's an end over and kick, and this will go into the end zone, and Emporia State will take the ball at the 25-yard line. 6.36 to play here in the third quarter. 17-7, Fort Hayes State leading. Tigers led 7-0 at halftime. 
Emporia State opened up the third quarter with a 71-yard or 72-yard touchdown pass from Braxton Marstall to Tyler Harris. The Tigers answered back with a touchdown of their own, and they just tacked on a field goal as they capped off a five-play 37-yard drive, and Dante Brown kicks the 46-yard field goal. On its takeover, first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Braxton Marstall working out of the shotgun, looking to throw, has time, now steps up. He's being flushed from the pocket. He's going to run the ball. He goes down after a two-yard gain. He dove forward. He wasn't going to take a onside full brunt hit. May have taken a little bit of a punch, but he looks like he's going to be okay. Yeah, Braxton, he's a tough guy. Yeah, he does, and he does a really good job of protecting himself. I mean, Coach Higgins probably would not agree with me, but uh, he tucked well and um, you know, doesn't take big hits. Braxton to throw pass, caught great catch, made across the way on the boundary in between a couple of defenders by Jordan Reed. And it'll be a first down for Emporia State as he makes the catch at the 41-yard line. They're coming off a big hit, uh, taking a concussion, getting knocked out of a game two weeks ago, but does not look like that was phasing him. 16-yard gain on the pass play. Braxton again to throw, has time, sets up over the middle of pass. is going to be caught and in traffic, incomplete. Unable to hang on to it was Danzel Strong. Three guys around him as he tried to make that catch. Yeah, he tried to force that one. Um, I mean, Denzel, one of his check down receivers there, uh, you know, over the middle of the field. But you know, like you just said, double, triple coverage probably probably was a better option out there. Second and 10 for Emporia State from their own 41-yard line. Kai Cowan's in at running back. Goes from the left side to the right side. Running play, Kai up the middle, and he picks up nothing. Waiting for him right there. In his tracks, Colt Traxel, the inside linebacker, maybe a yard. Yeah, I mean, I think Kai would is going to want to have that one back once he watched the film. Looked like uh, he had a couple cutback lanes to the right or to the left, but um, that chose to you know dive straight into the uh, into the arms of a defender. Third and nine for Emporia State from their own 42. Braxton takes the snap. Hand off, Kai Cowan straight ahead. This time he'll carry it up to the 45-yard line for a gain of three. That'll bring up fourth and six for Emporia State. And I would almost guarantee that, you know, this is, or I was going to say almost guarantee that Coach Higgins is going to go for it here, but he's uh, sitting on the punt unit. Playing for field position here, I am assuming. Five minutes to go here in the third quarter, 17-7. Fort Hayes State with a lead as Tyler Harris Stands back at his own 31-yard line to punt this one away. Deep to receive the punt, and Lane Bieberly stands at about his own 20-yard line and going to get a penalty marker. What are they going to call it? Is it on Emporia State yeah, or it's, it's on? Be a, it's going to be a false start on Orlando Sheets. So that'll move it back five yards, and it'll put the ball back at the 40-yard line. Hoping maybe it would go the other way, make it fourth and one, and then Coach Higgins might have to thumb through his playbook there. Yeah, it's uh... Orlando might maybe trying to get a little head, little little first step on his on his block there, or on the coverage. But uh, we're gonna have fourth and eleven here. That is the seventh penalty on Emporia State this afternoon. Thirty-two yards. Ten guys on the line of scrimmage. Here comes the pressure. The kick is away by Tyler Harris. It'll take a horn of bounce. Beaverly plays it on the bounce, and he gets ushered out of bounds at the thirty-three yard line. And they'll mark him out at the 33-yard line. So a turn of about three yards on the return. What a football being brought to you by Campbell Manufacturing USA at 1601 East South Avenue. Proudly supporting Emporia State University Athletics, Academics, and Alumni. Good luck to the Hornet football team. Stingers up. 17-7, Fort Hayes with a the lead. They take over the football first and 10. They'll have the ball spotted at their own 34-yard line. They'll have... Twin receivers off to the right side with a tight end in the slot to the right, single receiver to the left. In the backfield is Charles Tigner. The quarterback is Isaiah, or make that chance fuller. Here's a running, or keeping the ball will be fuller. He goes no place. In fact, the running back actually was D.J. Hickman. And, you know, Corey State sniffed that one out, and Trayvon Amons is right there to gobble up chance fuller. Yep, also I'm in on the play defensively, Logan Thompson. I'm I'm really curious as to the the methodology behind this two quarterback system, especially with Jacob Mazzara, who's one of the better quarterbacks probably in the country. Um, you know, going with a young guy, maybe just trying to get him some game reps, or maybe he offers something they think Mazzara doesn't. 
to throw the ball fuller down the far sideline. Diving catch attempted by Lane Beaverly. He can't hang on to it. Coverage provided by Kyle Rink, and boy, they're really picking on Kyle. Yeah, they are. I mean, and he's doing a really good job so far. I mean, he's only given up that one that one big catch, which I don't think was necessarily his fault. Um, you know, the, the receiver just making making a really good catch over him. But other than that, he's he's been doing really well today. Third and 11 for Fort Hayes from their own 33-yard line. Three wideouts this time to the right side. Single receiver to the left. Fuller on the quarterback keeper, and he's going to get hit by Logan Thompson and then driven backwards. And the, no, you can't call that a penalty because the whistle hadn't blown yet. And Logan Thompson is raising his hands like the rest of us. I, I do not think that was a roughing the passer. As the official hadn't blown his whistle yet, at least I hadn't heard the whistle being blown. The only thing I could say is that, oh, you, this isn't the NFL. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you uh, if you breathe on the quarterback in the NFL, it's a personal foul. They're going to call a late hit on Logan Thompson. I I was listening for the whistle, and I did not hear a whistle. I didn't hear it either. And, you know, I his forward progress was stopped, but the officials hadn't blown the whistle to stop the play yet. So, uh, I mean, Logan Thompson just doing what he's, you know, supposed to and finishing the play. And... Coach Garen Hagen's going to want an ex explanation from Dwight Niebling, the referee. And I'm the penalty gives Fort Hay State a first down. Yeah, that's the big killer. I mean, the 15 yards is one thing, but, you know, we had him stopped on third and long. We're going to force a punt here. You know, you're giving him a fresh set of downs. 3.47 to play here in the third quarter, 17-7. Fort Hay State with a lead. What a football being brought to you by Emporia State University, where learning comes to life with more than 200 academic programs. Schedule a campus visit at emporia.edu. As Coach Garen Higgins voices his concerns, displeasure, and this is a call made by the referee. He's the one that threw the hanky. You weren't going to talk him out of that one. And Fort Hayes keeps the drive alive. Or ESU keeps the drive alive. Fort Hayes. Yeah. Okay. From the Tiger 45-yard line. Fuller, handoff, goes to the running back, and he goes nowhere. As DJ Hickman takes the handoff, he gains maybe a half yard. Logan Thompson making the tackle. I may have inspired Logan. I would say Logan playing some inspired football now. I mean, I, I can't blame him. I'd be very frustrated about that. But, you know, responding well by, you know, playing well after after a tough call. On second down and nine. And Chance Fuller, the quarterback. High snap over his head. He's bobbling it. And this time he goes down back of the 30. That'll be a 16-yard loss on the sack and that's thanks to a bad snap They're going right over his head and um you know maybe the you know, fuller the quarterback trying to pull a braxton marstall and pick it up and make something happen instead um you know just falling on it and cutting your losses and um instead of what probably should have been a seven to eight, seven to eight yard loss turns into a 16 yard loss and now you have about third and 30 third and 25 to be exact the running play to hickman off the right side breaks a tackle, gets to the 40-yard line. He gets stood up and driven out of bounds. At the 43-yard line, that's going to be well short of the first down stick. It'll bring up fourth down for Fort Hayes. You mean in, in the, the, you know, the bad roughing the passer, late hit call, um, turning out to not hurt ESU, so it would seem you know, able to uh, capitalize on a, a bad snap and uh, force punt here. Kai Cowan's deep to receive this punt from Fort Hayes State, as Dante Brown gets the kick away, he booms this one. It'll take a bounce, and it will go into the end zone. Poria State will take over the football first and 10 at their own 20-yard line, trailing 17-7 with a minute 38 to play here in the third quarter. 
Let's go down to Tegan Trahoon in this John North Ford sideline update. Well, as you had said earlier, Greg, it's already cold down here, and the rain's starting a little bit. Not necessarily a downpour, but enough of a drizzle to uh, kind of get you a little wet. But the, the crazy thing about it is that might have actually played a big factor in that lot, that blown snap is that the ball may be starting to accrue a little bit of moisture, getting a little bit slick as we go forward. We'll see. Yeah, here we go into that package again. Landon and Kai. So, so now we're just getting Kai isolated on a linebacker, and, and he's basically reading the leverage of the backer right here. Um, yeah, we're down 10. You know, besides the big play we had to start the second half, we've not really done much offensively. So now we're motioning him out to the other side. Braxton Marshall and play action, setting uh, up, looking, looking, looking. Now I think he might have been. Uh, uh, great catch in traffic. Might have been open Made there, Kai. Ray. But he goes down at the Fort Hayes you got great protection right there up front by the we offensive line. Back at the line of Maybe there's a reason why. Maybe they're going to call holding. Uh, I don't know. It'll be an ineligible receiver nope. downfield on Emporia State. Yeah, it's definitely discouraging because we we're not running any type of run pass option right there, or RPO, or was just I don't know how we would have somebody down there, but I guess we did. Sometimes that happens when you're doing run pass options, you know, but we were not doing one there. First down over uh, again, but first and 15. Braxton on the option, keeping the ball. Uh, carries it up to it's a great play by that D lineman, honestly. Line hit late. Um, As he has come to a stop. Denzel does a good job blocking the scraping linebacker. Just running basically, all that is is triple option out of shotgun. That's basically what it is. Um, Ty Collins in motion out of the back door, off to the left side. Braxton to throw, three man rush by Fort Hayes, unloads the pass. Pass caught by Ty Collins on a crossing route. He'll go down at the 38. It's a good job by Kai. We're just, you know, we're, we're, we're just putting ourselves, I mean, like the critical, critical down distance. We're third and six. Besides the big play we have to start the second half, we've not been able to get very many plays more than, you know, 10 to 12 yards. Um, I'm sure Hayes feels good about where they're at, controlling the game right now. Uh, we've not really threatened them enough offensively to put them on their heels. The thing about it is, I do know. With Emporia State University, your dreams are within reach. You get more choices. We offer hands-on, real-life experiences that will set you apart. Well, I know that, you know, we got a veteran group offensively, and uh, I know there's a lot of those guys that, you know, are two, three-year starters, and, and they know what it takes in this league to win games. So uh, we're not going to lay down. We're going to fight, you know. And that was the one thing that, you know, yeah, the difference between having veterans and having so much inexperience as we did past the past fall is that our veteran guys can fight through adversity, can fight through the things when you're not hitting on all cylinders offensively to where last year we struggled enough to where when we would get into these ruts, it, it was hard for us to get out, you know. And as the season progressed, it just got worse, you know. And, and uh, you know, and then sometimes you would get, you know, I, I would get impatient and things like that to where, you know, it's just, uh, it's just a, di it's different. It's just that that's the difference between having a veteran group like we had uh, and you know having a, a very inexperienced group like we had last year. Man, we just. If we struggled for, for three or more series, it kind of was hard for us to get out of that. And they've also added a field goal. They lead it 17 to seven as we go to the final quarter of this game. Braxton will work out of the shotgun, landed over the backfield with him. 
In motion comes Tyler Harris from left to right. Now goes back the other direction. Takes the snap. Braxton to throw. Step up in the pocket the right there. Pressure. Now he's rolling to the outside. He's across the 40, and he will not pick up the first down. This ball comes free. For you, State. We got it back. Down. And it does. Coming up with the fumble recovery for Emporia State, that will be Braden Jansen, the left guard. Now there's one way to pick up a first down. Braxton a little, looks like he's a little slow getting up and is uh, taking a squat here around the middle of the field. The yeah, field I think he – I don't know what happened to him here. I don't remember. He took a good yeah, – um, I'm sure. Yeah, I thought we had pretty decent sure protection right there. Back. Braxton always – you know, you know we could do a good job of, of, of you know, finding seams and taking off running. Sometimes I would want him to stay in there just a little bit longer and, and um, you know, find where his check downs are at. This is a chance to look at the final scores this afternoon. It was Nebraska Carney defeating London with 41 to 14. Washburn over Northeastern 58 to 14. Right here, down oh, I'm nervous. You know, Brax, Braxton's down, and uh, we, like I said, we have been really inconsistent. And you know, if you got to throw your backup in, which was Dalton at the time, uh, in a in a situation where it matters, and it's not at the end of the game. You know, you got a, you got a, a, a red shirt in the third quarter and uh, freshman over there. Pittsburgh State 28 to nothing as Braxton Marshall being ushered off the field. Hopefully he'll be good enough to come back. But we'll have to wait and see. He'll have to go through that concussion. So we got first and ten. The only other game that is going on this afternoon in the Dalton comes in. We got good field position. I didn't think twice about it. I know he's a redshirt freshman, but you know we're down 17-7. We got to make something happen. Uh, I already know what play we got called right here. I can just tell by the alignment of the receivers. Uh, this is a great job. A little play action pass. Side steps. Uh, a little pressure right there. We run a little chair route. A little chair route where we're Tyler is. Vertical for about 10 yards, and he breaks on an out route. Uh, and then, you know, that's the seat, the, the out part of it, and then breaks it back towards the left upright uh, in the shape of a chair. So he's out, and then he's. And that's covering some real estate. Speaking of real estate, buying or selling your home, called Jeff Tavin, Bree Williams of Ecuador. Tyler, you know, he's a, led the league, I think, in touchdown receptions. Again, was a player that was a transfer kid that played his junior year. I don't know, maybe had 10 catches at best, I, maybe more than that, but not very much. Uh, and then, you know, his senior year has the type of year that he had. You know, it's like it's like a loss in Homer. You know, sometimes those guys that are transfers, they get here. And, you know, you always expect transfers to be impact players. But sometimes it takes them a while. It takes them a full year. Uh, and those guys are, are two perfect examples of it where they played, didn't have a big role their junior year, and then their senior year, they were an impact player force. In Emporia State, you get more value. And students have the second lowest debt load of all regional universities. Schedule a campus visit at emporia.edu slash visit. Sophomore year of high school, and um, especially with the Division II level guys, usually don't start getting recruited till their junior, if not their senior years. Um, but for him to get a scholarship offer from Coach Higgins, even as a sophomore, you know, that was a guy that Coach Higgins obviously really wanted. And it um, looks like, you know, he's going to be a guy that, you know, can make some plays for us in the future. That was a great ball. That's a great job by Dalton stepping in there in that type of situation. I don't even think he had time to think about it. He made the throw. And Gets to the outside, 25. We lose contain. And he goes out of bounds. And on the return for Fort Hay State was DeAndre Reed. He got a good return, and Fort Hay State will end up with pretty good field position. See where they mark him out of bounds at. They'll mark him out We're of bounds back in the, the game. 34 yard line. So got the momentum. A 24 yard kickoff. So what we've done is, like I said, 
Hayes does a good job of making you be patient and to to earn everything you get offensively. Uh, but when we were able to take our shots, it was good that we executed. I mean, because it led to touchdowns. That's a great job on first down. I always think first down is such a critical play. I mean, defensively, because now you can kind of control the down and distance. Same thing offensively. You know, if you do if you do really well on first down, it makes things easier, uh, especially as a play caller. There again, working out of a shotgun. Tigner in the backfield with him. Beaverly, the single receiver off to the left side. Twin receivers to the right side. Now Tigner moves to the right side of the formation. They toss it to Tigner, looking to stretch it out. He gets no way to stretch that play out. They run a little quick toss. Outside zone blocking scheme. Received some help from the down lineman of Logan Thompson. He did a good job right there. So now we got him in third down. It's a big down right here. Making it third and 11 for Fort Hayes. Personnel personnel bringing in the, uh, bringing in the, the, the third and long um, coverage, bringing in his one defensive tackle, two defensive ends, and the rest linebackers and uh, corners here. So playing the pass all the way. Aslick comes in motion. He'll set up a little closer. Looks like we're in two man right there. Defensive pressure, he throws it over the middle, pass is incomplete. Pressure coming from Parker Bass. As he hit Mazzara as he threw it. He Parker was always putting pressure on the quarterback. Uh, and it brings up he he might have got that tip and earlier on that interception. I don't remember, but the side of the right now. This side again, he, he was such a good pass rusher in this league. Packers and uh, in corners here. They're playing the pass all the way. As look comes in motion, he'll set up a little closer. Mazzara takes the snap. Here comes the pressure. He throws it over the middle. Pass is incomplete. Pressure. Coming from Parker Bass as he hit Mazzara as he threw it. He tried to make the connection with Hazlitt, overshoots him, and it brings up fourth down. Momentum entirely on the, the side of the Hornets right now. This sideline is, you know, we see him jumping up and down. There's a lot of energy over there. If the offense can, can take advantage of that great hold by the defense, this could be, this could, game could blow wide open. Deep to receive the kick for Emporia State will be Kai Cowens as. Getting set to punt the ball away, Dante Brown. Officials. No, that they're, they, that ball is misspotted. It was supposed to be at the 33-yard line, not the 34, because they didn't put the, the guy who was running the down stick did not move it. It's supposed to be at the 34-yard line. It's supposed to be fourth and 11. Yeah, because the guy who's running the down stick didn't. I noticed that he didn't move the stick to where the ball was at. Yeah, they're so. going to back them up two yards, or I guess just one. It's just one that they're supposed to move it. They want to penalize them a yard. That's fine. Here's a snap to Brown, and he hits a low-line drive. Corey State clears out of the way, and it'll roll across the 25, and it's still rolling. And it will be down at the 21-yard line of Emporia State, and that's where the Hornets will have the ball to start this drive with 13.25 to play. In the fourth quarter, trailing 17 to 14. On a football brought to you by AAA Appliance Service and providing major. With Emporia State University, your dreams are within reach. You get more choices. We offer hands on, real life experiences that will set you apart. At Emporia State, you get more value. And students have the second lowest debt load of all regional universities. Schedule a campus visit at emporia.edu slash visit. ...of off-road tires, wheels, rubber tracks, and undercarriage systems to serve the material handling, construction, agricultural, and power sports industries. Camso, the road-free company, 1601 East South Avenue in Emporia. All the top guns, the masters of disaster. When creepy crawly critters show up on the scene. For over 50 years, Mackenzie Pest Control has offered quality service to all of East Central Kansas. With a knowledgeable staff and hometown service, let Mackenzie Pest Control make your home or business pest free the best it can be. Call Mackenzie Pest Control. Professionals you can depend on. Mackenzie Pest Free, the best it can be. 
black and gold through and through. Mix 104.9. Braxton back in the lineup for Emporia State, and he's going to run it on first down as the Hornets have the ball first and 10 at their own 21-yard line. Braxton went out of the game after almost taking a knee, after taking a hit, and then Dalton Cowan comes in and throws a strike for a touchdown. Braxton on the first down play, kick picks up three yards, making it second down and seven. Braxton working out of the shotgun, Landon Olt in the backfield with him. Between receivers left, single receiver right. Jordan Jackson, handoff straight ahead. Glad to know, and he gets tripped up as he reaching out and tripping him up. I think it's Colt Traxel who tripped him up and kept him from breaking it. One he last, almost, one he last had, little finger. Yeah, another running play for Landon, and this time he's going to get dropped for only a yard on the play. Is making the tackle will be Tevin Evans. But again, and the officials holding up play. Looks like we have an injured on an offensive lineman. No, everybody's okay. Justin Brown will check in for Emporia State. Oh, there is a penalty, I believe, on Fort Hayes. Yeah, they're calling a, an illegal substitution on one of the defensive linemen down there. So it'll be second down and five. Now, that, so first and five for Emporia State. There we go. Tyler Harris checks in for Emporia State as Jordan Jackson checks out. Three wideouts to the right side. Braxton looking to throw. Only a three-man rush being flushed, and this time he goes down as he rolled right into that pressure, making the tackle. From his defensive end spot, Sterling swoops and he kind of stood over him and kind of said something to Braxton. I didn't think you were supposed to be able to do that. That that last formation looked like they had they had three receivers kind of you know close to the line of scrimmage, but they had Landon Nault lined up here way over like right on the sideline. I wonder if they were going to try to do something with him that um, you know, got sniffed out. Justin Brown in motion on second down and ten after a loss of five. Braxton takes the snap. Three-man rush, sets up, throws it, pass caught by Justin Brown. He can't hang on to it. He was right in triple coverage. Initial coverage provided by Jose Delgado, receiving help from Connor Shadid and also from cornerback Akil Knowles. So it took three guys to cover Justin Brown. Landon Nolt goes from wide out to the left side to in the backfield. Third and 10 for Emporia State, ball spotted at their own 30 Eight-yard line. Braxton takes the snap. Again, three-man rush. Braxton looking to throw, going to run the ball, and he's going to get stopped for no or minimal gain on the play. It'll bring up fourth down for the Hornets. Good job by the Fort Hayes State secondary, not allowing any of the receivers to get open, but that's the other part of it. The receivers need to find a way to get open. Yeah, that's right. Um, so a comment I was going to make before he came into the game was um, hadn't seen Justin Brown in the lineup for – or on the field for the last couple drives, and you know as he's jogging off here, it looks like you know kind of favoring that that right leg a little bit. So um, you know, I wonder if he's a little bit banged up. Here comes the punt from Tyler Harris. Hangs this one high. Beaverly fields it going back at the 18-yard line, angling to the far sideline, gets ankle tackled. Nice special teams tackle made by Emporia State's. Looks like Dawson Hamas. And Fort Hay State will have the ball first and 10 at their own 22-yard line. 10.47 to play here in the fourth quarter, 17-14. Fort Hay State with a lead. Want a football brought to you by McKenzie Pest Control. Pest free the best it can be. Your authorized firm for the Centricon Colony Elimination System. Call them at 342-4222. The Hornet offense unable to take advantage of a three and out by the defense to see if the defense can't force another three and out. Jacob Mazzara in at quarterback. Takes the snap, running play to Tigner, looking for some running room, and he gets hit from behind after a two-yard gain. That'll be Parker Bass in on the tackle for Emporia State. Carry up to the 30 or 24-yard line, making it second down and eight. He's playing awful conservative right now, opting to just, you know, kind of nickel and dime and run. Um, you know, they're, they're only up three. If I were them, I'd be playing a little bit more aggressive and, and trying to get more points on the board. Here's Mazzara to throw the passes. 
almost tipped, but it's completed. Making the catch will be Beaverly, and Beaverly will pick up the first down as he makes the catch and carries it to the 33-yard line on the coverage. Kyle Rink as the Fort Hay State Tigers pick up the first down as they attack the boundary that time. Hayes kind of going with the, you know, not not going with the tempo that we see from PSU, but also, also going, going with, with the no huddle. First and 10, you know, they're trying to cross the, you know, get in good field position. We, uh, we've both kind of slowed down our tempos, both teams. Got another turnover. They do! They do. That's huge. And again, any of the years that we've had that have been uh, really successful, we have been one of the top teams, you know, in the country in, in turnover margin. You know, so we got good field position right here. We got 947 left on the clock. We're in that package where that we have been successful with. Oh, he's there. We should have just made the throw. Um, you know, again, Braxton's got to trust that right there. I know he can say he can make that throw. He can make that throw all day. I do know Braxton did a great job, though, too, of securing the football. You know, he wasn't a guy that threw bad interceptions. You know, I mean, all quarterbacks are going to throw interceptions at some point in time. Uh, you just don't want them to be bad ones, you know, like – Braxton on second and 10. There he is. There he is. He, took, he had the same look last time and didn't make the throw. Now he runs basically the same play again. We make the throw, you know. Third and one. We're definitely in four down territory right here. On third down, Braxton to the throw. That's a big time play. I don't know what play we had called right there, but it worked. I don't know if it's the best play. Just by right here watching this. I would have rather ran the ball. But remember, Don, I only called a good plays. Yeah. I call plenty of them too. With Emporia State University, your dreams are within reach. You get more choices. We offer hands-on, real-life experiences that will set you apart. At Emporia State, you get more value. And students have the second lowest debt load of all regional universities. Schedule a campus visit at emporia.edu slash visit. Marstall will work out on the shotgun. Landon all will line up to his left. Three receivers out to the left side. Single receiver to the right side. That's Jordan Reed. Braxton looks to the sideline. Flats his some hands together. Man coverage right here. Play action. Setting up the throw. Has some time. Got, got pass. Definitely got the right play Tyler call right there to man. Harris. I think we're going to be roughing the pass around Hayes. There was a there was a way flag from sure are. Now roughing the passer on Fort Hay State, so that's going to give Emporia State another at least half the distance. Regarding half the distance, we're going to get 10 yards in an automatic. Get a penalty down. there. Bell, that bells us out. I don't know what down in distance. Oh, that's first and 10 and right there. Make it first and goal at the 10. So now first and goal, we got uh, – Give them 15. Put it 
at the five. A little over eight minutes first left to go in the game. For Emporia State. This is their first time they've been in the red I zone. Think motion. We Rats got man coverage. Snap. You can tell that by the motion. The pressure throws it, and the pass is going to be incomplete. Uh, maybe some miscommunication. Braxton looking at his receiver. Right there, I think you you I'm know Cole. Sure if Schumacher, who's a starter for us this year. I mean, uh, again, and he did a good job for us. He's just young right now. I mean, he's a little bit, you know, inexperienced. Um, and this is a critical time in the game. Um, and he's growing up, you know. I mean, it helped him this year because he had a really good year for us this past fall. Danzel Strong. Between the receivers out to the left, single receiver to the right. Braxton takes the snap, looking to throw. Has time, set up, throws it to the end zone. Pass caught, touchdown! Emporia State, Jordan Reed with man for man coverage. That's a great route. Take the lead for the that first was a great route. Today. I can tell by the signal that he gave him that I think he changed the route, honestly, by, by what Braxton gave him. Um, again, veterans. You know, Jordan Reed played for us as a true freshman. You know, you can say he's a three-year starter for us. Um, and you got a three-year starter quarterback. These are the type of plays that you see us executing in 2018 that you did not see us executing last year. You know, there was too much not being on the same page because of the inexperience. Um, I guarantee you that, that Jay Reed changed that route right there. Clark Schoonover. And the Hornets have taken the lead here this afternoon over Fort Hay State, the 18th ranked team in the country. And they've done it the Emporia State way. Yeah, the more Braxton has, uh, you know, been, I think he's been playing really well these last couple weeks. And 14 straight points. Right now. Yeah, just with 14 straight to take the lead. Feel a lot better now than he did. There's no question. Oh, we, and, and, the turnovers definitely have helped us. Um, it was good to capitalize uh, on that one. And I think that, um, you know, with where we're setting at, not that we were not ever ready to play this game by any means, but just when you when you score 14 straight points, I think your confidence goes up. Um, now, this is the type of football that I was expecting to see. Defensively, we got to feed off that and help shut the door on this game. 8.05 to play in the game. Still a lot of football to go here this afternoon at Wells Stadium. And I know that, you know, again, we, we're up right now 21 17. We got to come out and get a stop. Two by Braxton Marshall, one by Dalton Cowling. Here's the kick and the return by Fort Hayes. All right, great coverage. You know, they got the ball on the 24. On the special uh, they probably hadn't on started the on a kickoff return on the 24 all day, inside the 25. And here we go. Here we are. Fourth quarter. Now we got them got him inside the 25 yard line. So now we got to play. This, this is, you know, again, defensively, we've been playing well, but this one we can really impose our will, you know, and this, you know, let's, let's get a stop right here. I know they did trail a little bit to Washburn. Jacob Mazzara, the quarterback, will work out on the shotgun. Looks to throw the pass over the middle. It's going to be caught by the tight end. This Matt is what Wittenberg. distinguishes between so be a, gain of nine yards on the play. a really good State defense to to and a great play. defense. Yeah, you know, great defenses uh, right here are going to shut shut this down. In the, uh, second half, he was the guy who was um, tearing us up there in the, uh, in the first half, but um, we've been able to do a good job on him and keep him quiet so far. Second down and nine for Fort Hayes. High snap and a handoff goes to the tailback. That's taken That's good job right there by Gary Woods. DJ I can tell right here just Hickman, def our Hickman, defensive Hickman, line, too, is kind of controlling the line of scrimmage. We're getting a lot, of, lot more pushback right there. Uh, we did a really good job of tackling in this game. You know, that's that's the funny thing about football is that we're, we don't go live a lot anymore like we used to. And, heck, I think we tackle better now that we don't go live and we work it more just from a fundamental aspect and trying to scrimmage all the time. Is it caught? I mean, no, incomplete. I'm able to hang on to it. It was Lane Beaverly on the near sideline. As Kyle Rink had coverage for him. Third down. That was a tough throw. I mean, they're, they're lined up over here on the right hash. Um, Bezerra throwing it all the way back. So we got to get a stop. On what would have been just a, a 
and I know if they get a first down, I'm probably going to be upset. Oh, second down, second ten. Hail loose over there. On the far sideline, to Manny Ramsey, the redshirt freshman out of Canadian Texas, and he gets ushered out of bounds. But it's going to be enough for a first down on a gain of 11 yards to the 14. Probably gave him a little bit too line. much cushion. Clock rolling, um, 7:04 to go here in the fourth quarter. 21 they're at midfield. State. Again, let's not forget they got a great field goal kicker, Very but I know they want to put points on the board based off how many it's points are down. Again, to throw, have some Run a little stick the concept. The they're a little late with the Tennessee throw right there. Anytime you can have a quarterback that's not – like right there, he was not on time. You know, there was – there was. looked like to me he had his eyes on him the whole time. I don't know if that was – Design that that was supposed to be so when that happens, even though you may complete a pass, you may not get very much. You know, you may maybe a two-yard gain because the guy that ran the flat routes all the way to the sidelines now. Trying to put together a drive, see if they can't get the lead back. The one defense wants to get another stop. Snap back to Mazzara. Has some time. Sets up. He's going deep down the far sideline. The pass is going to be caught. That's a big time play. Catch along the boundary. That one was I mean, honestly, that's good. The, the good ground. coverage by B-Dash. That uh, there's nothing you can do about that. Because that was and great coverage. That good the throw you know, to, to his back the shoulder. I think it was, if he did that on purpose, that's not a good throw. Swing pass into the boundary. Again, great job. You, you know, we got five, six guys around the ball right there. I mean, we're fighting right here. We're, we're setting it two and three. Again, veterans, you know, on the team, you know. Second down and 15 for the Tigers from the Emporia State 38-yard line. High snap to Mazzara, looking to throw. He's angling down the far sideline. Beaverly in stride, makes the catch, and he's down to the two-yard line. Second 15. Thrown, thrown pass by Mazzara. You know, we Beaverly got them on their the heels, and, and we give up a big play. That receiver's a good player. Again, he's a receiver I think got better every year. He's like guys like we have. Um, I think probably um, – now they're inside the five-yard line, getting ready to take the lead back. Here's a handoff to Pick Dan, and he'll take it in for the touchdown. Two tackles around a couple of defenders, and DJ Hickman scores. So now it went from you know first half it's seven to zero. Nobody's really doing much. It's a defensive battle. To now it's uh, turned into a mini eight-minute shootout. You know, 10 minute shootout or whatever. So the Tigers put together an impressive drive of their own as they go nine plays. Seven and we had them, you know, inside the 25 five yard line right there to start out. Good and Fort Hayes State retakes the lead 24 21 with 531 to play in the game. There's a timeout on the field. But ebbs and flows of games, you know. I mean, defensively. They're bailing us out all first half. Um, getting turnovers. Man, putting us in, you know, getting the ball back for us. Uh, now we got to go do something. You know, I mean, there's offenses that are good in the MIAA. You know, teams aren't going to drive the ball down and score on you. Um, now we got to do our part, um, you know, in which we should do our part. I mean, we got veterans offensively here. You know, this is what, you know, when you got veterans, when your back's against the wall at the end of the game, you got to put something together. This is when those guys come through because they're used to it, you know, and that experience is so huge in the MIAA because you play in so many games like this, Don. If you think about it, so many games that are close, that a play here or there uh, is the difference, you know. I mean, you start thinking time here, five and a half minutes left. Is that? Nah, probably not really yet. I know, I, I mean, I'm, you know, we got three timeouts left. Um, I yeah, I, 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 that's a good question, Don. I, my thing is the coach. I'm just I'm built to like go score, whether it's you know I wish it whether it's three or four minute drive or whether it's thirty seconds. I mean, 
it's hard to like do it the way that you want to milk the clock, especially when you're a tempo team like us, milk it and then score with the minute left or, or 30 seconds, you know, so the situation dictates that sometimes. And I think the situation dictates it here on this drive, if I remember correctly. 24, 21, Fort Hayes State with a lead, 528 to play in this football game as the Hornets take over the football. Last time they had it, they took it after a turnover and scored their first touchdown of the afternoon. Braxton Marsh stalling at quarterback. Running play, handoff, Landon Nolt, and he bulldozes his way forward to a good job right there by Landon. For a gain. You know, didn't have a whole lot there. On the play, depending on where they give him forward progress to. Looks like they'll give him forward progress to the 34, so it'll be a Apparently we're not thinking about time too much because we're tempoing right now. You know, and I've, I've said this, Don, and you've seen our offense for a long time, but we always play better when we get into a rhythm tempo-wise. It is just a – Again. He'll be shy of a first down by a yard. That'll be a gain of six yards, though, making it third and one. There's no need for him to have went out of bounds right there. I don't, I don't know if Lana was trying to or more just get the first down. Good job of getting out of bounds and stopping the clock. Running play, Landon Old straight ahead, and he mm. will not get the first down. He normally gets that first down, but Fort Hayes State's inside linebacker Colt Tracks will fill the hole in a hurry, and he stopped. So there. Old short of the first down, and wants to face fourth and one from the 40-yard line. Third down, we didn't get it. Go for it here. Yeah, bring in the beat. That's where, ends, from a tempo Jones standpoint, and sometimes and you have to take a step play. back, slow it down, and make sure you get the right play call in. Four twenty-three to play you know, the it's, game. Braxton looking to the sideline, maybe hoping to draw them offside, but I don't think that's going to happen with this Fort Hayes State team. Braxton takes the snap, handoff, Landon Nolte. No, it's Braxton keeping the ball. He'll dive forward. He'll have the first down. Fake the handoff. That's a great Nolte. job by Braxton. The right side did Braxton Marshall. You know, Marshall pick. there's been a lot of situations. We've ran that play in short yardage situations in critical games, and I'm going to say more times than not, Braxton figures out a way to get the first down. Makes the right read. There first may be a, a, somebody there to make the tackle, but he's They're good enough to, three, to get three yard a yard line. and a half, you know, when we need a and yard. Backfield for Braxton. Four man front, and we're going to get a penalty marker. I think Emporia State had not enough guys on the line of scrimmage or too many guys oh, on the now, line of scrimmage. No, I'm mad right now thinking about that. And they flag Marcellus Edwards, one of the tight ends for a false start, so that'll move the ball back five yards, making it. First and 15 from the 38-yard line. 3.53 to play here in the fourth quarter. 24-21, Fort Hayes State with a lead. Fort Hayes State with a football. Braxton working out of the shotgun. Now out of the backfield in motion goes Landon Olo to the left. Braxton takes the snap. Shuffle All right, pass. a little shuffle pass right he's there. strong, and he'll pick up maybe... I think going back, I can just tell by that play, shuffle pass, we got to find the dent, you know, where, where the opening is uh, on the line of scrimmage. You know, like we ended up getting right behind one of our linemen, and we should have been to the right or left where the dent is in the line of scrimmage. You know, I mean. There's a good, you know, seven to eight yard gap there between the linebackers and the defensive linemen just hoping we can create some plays. Man rush, Braxton throws in near sideline, pass caught by Land and all he'll go out of bounds. At the Getting into our check down right there. Line, and that gets him back to Didn't get very much yardage. It'll make it third um, down and ten. So this is the original start point for this particular set of downs. Third down and ten. Opponents facing third Not a fun and situation. Opponents are nine for twenty on third down in this game. This is a big third down. Have to convert here. Yeah, it is. Braxton Rainey's land and old motion from far wide left up into the backfield. Zone. Braxton now looking to the sidelines for the play. Play clock down the nine. And now he'll bring bet you Schumacher in motion out. to the left. Nope. Braxton takes the snap, sets up, throws it to Schumacher, makes the catch. Can't break the ankle tackle. And he'll be stopped at the 48 yard line. Now bring up fourth down for Emporia State. Clock rolling with 219 to go. Oh, Sorry. man. Must go for Again. scenario. Great Time job by Cole. Here, I, I guarantee you. They're going to talk about what play they want to run. They're facing a year later, he has the same play. He's we'll going to the outside instead of the inside, even after the catch. As they have the ball at the. 
How about fourth and ten plays for you? Was it fourth and ten or fourth and five? Fourth and four, sorry. Fourth and four. Still. Yeah. Man. With two minutes the, You know, these are the plays that you think about during uh, the night before. You know, or this is this is, or, or when you're eating breakfast and you're talking to the pregame meal, field field talking to the quarterbacks. Right. You know, you know I, think, like, I think this is a must-go for situation here. Because when you get in these situations, you want to have your play left. ready. Uh, uh, what you're going to call? Cancel, you don't need too many. I, you know, just it's need it's about two things. A lot of times we will practice these situations too. Uh, but I know from the quarterback and, and we're going to talk about this a lot. You know, we're, we're going to before the game. You know, and, and two to three days before in these situations. Tight end to the left, twin receivers to the right. Braxton looking to the sideline. So we get into we were in different formation. Three wide out to the right, two to the left. Braxton takes the snap. Here comes the pressure. Sets up, throws, pass, caught, first down. Tyler Harris. So basically, we lined up in a, in a personnel down, grouping, which is our 12 personnel, down, and then we spread everybody out to no back. All right, so uh, basically, their defense was going to call, you know, for, for our big personnel, they couldn't get out of their defense. And then we basically just found the opening in a zone right there with Tyler and just threw a hitch pass, man. It's easy. I mean, I, I'm, I would be 50-50 on those throws, so hitch, hitch route, Don, you know. So, again, we're naturally milking the clock here, but we're doing it the way we do things offensively, you know. We're going to pick and choose our times to go for a big play. Oh, there he was. We had full open right there, but we come back over to our check down. Um, it's so important for quarterbacks, I think, to throw on time. I'm such a big believer in that. Um, and your feet are always going to tell you when you're on time. You know, like our drops, you know, when our whatever our drop is, when it hits that uh, first step or third step, that ball should be out, you know, on our first look or what our, we call a rhythm look. Great protection. You know, up front we're giving great protection right there. It's a good play by their defender. You know, I mean, one thing about this league, nothing is easy. So second uh, ten, I noticed you know Braxton's doing a lot better job here in the second half of staying in the pocket a little bit. Second and ten for Emporia State from the Tiger 31 yard line. Landon Alton the backfield along with Braxton Marshall. Braxton takes the snap, has some time, sets up, throws a near sideline pass, caught going out of bounds after making the catch. So now we got it again. We are in two down territory right here. We have two timeouts left. So we don't have to get it all back on a second and long. We get, you know, five of it, six of it. Now we're in the third and five, third and four, thinking that we got to get four or five yards and two downs because it's a third down, uh, fourth down. You know, yeah, we can kick a field goal. I do know that to tie it, but we won't win the game. Just put us in that situation to, to make the decision. Tyler Harrison motion from left to right goes back to the left. Braxton takes the snap. There he is. Tyler's oh, open. He was open right there on the break. It's a great job by Braxton. He, he turned a broke play uh, into a positive play. Because you go back and watch that, Tyler Harris is wide open. And that's his rhythm look. Call Ryan Cali State Bank to learn about energy efficiency loans for small businesses. No origination fee member FDIC. Braxton on first down, throws it to the end zone. Now there, Braxton usually does not make those throws. He, he is, does such a great job of not forcing the football. He almost forced it right there. Again, our, our guys up front, they're doing a really good job with protection right now.
Second and ten for Emporia State from the Tiger 14-yard line. You got formation of the boundary, which I like. It's going to have to use the timeout as the play clock is down to six. This will be the second timeout used by Emporia State, stopping the clock. Or the clock is stopped with a minute. Again, we have one timeout left, which is all we need in this situation. We want to also make sure that we're, we're getting what we want. You know, and if we have to think about it, you just burn a timeout, let's think about it. I mean, um, now, I definitely would want to save this timeout, so if our defense needs to use it, they can use it. But um, Colton Cowan, one for one, 54 yards and a touchdown. Braxton Marshall, six. Carries 68 rushing yards. Landon all 15 carries 55 rushing yards. Tyler Harris, the leading receiver, four catches, 140 yards, and two touchdowns. He might be one of the guys we talk to at the end of this game, depending on how this game does end. Yeah, again, Tyler had a great game. Points are force. facing second um, and ten from the Fort Hayes State yeah, just a, yard line. One minute, one second just to go. Tough, Six more just tough. Just to play in the game. Tough to, to get things on. I mean, Hayes is a good football team. I mean, they're defending MIAA champs for a reason. Well, we didn't change much because we come out in the same formation. Schumacher's strong and Reed to the near side. Braxton to throw. Looking. Now he's going to run the ball. No, he's looking to throw it. Throws to the end zone. Caught by Jordan Reed. He dies for the end zone. That's a great job by Jordan Reed. That's a great job by. Braxton, you know, I know what play we had called right there is in our lottery series. Uh, again, another example of Braxton being able to throw across his body, being a guy that plays baseball, that uses different angles. What an individual effort by Jordan Reed as he catches the touchdown. That's a great job by Jordan finding the grass right there uh, and just settling, you know getting his numbers to the quarterback, and then the extra effort. You know, Jordan Reed doesn't, make, doesn't get in the end zone his freshman year because he's benching, I don't know, he might be with the bar, you know. But but he got stronger, and again, senior want to. You know, two and three, it's their senior year. They don't want to get in a, a – they don't want to go on a losing streak. They don't want to have a losing year. You know, there's a – a lot of success within this senior group right here, you know, I mean, uh, in the postseason. So that was a big time play. And what about Braxton with his knowing where the line of scrimmage was? Again, that is a three year veteran, heady guy. Braxton was always heady, you know, I mean, he always, I felt like, made good decisions in critical times, even when he was younger. Uh, his first year starting, I go back to the Central Missouri game that we won in 2016 on the road. I mean, he played, even though he was a sophomore, he played like a veteran. Um, that, that, that was because of all his film study, right? Really yeah, yeah, it was his film study. Uh, but he just had a natural, like, you know, his dad's a football coach. Coach's son's always, I feel like, have a feel for the game. Uh, on that last touchdown around and he's just a smart player. He's a heady player. I mean, so field goal doesn't do him any good. That's why it was so huge for us to get uh, a touchdown. But turns it out to the it's 47 seconds left. They do have three timeouts left, which is a concern. They have a veteran quarterback as well. Uh, number 87 is their best receiver. He's not a fast guy, so you, so we can't worry about him getting behind us. Uh, but we got to keep everything in front, and we got to tackle really well right now. We got to tackle well. You know, if I'm a DB, I got to get my head, and I can't get my eyes in the backfield to see what's going on. Looking to throw, has time. Here comes the pressure. He's going to get sacked. Ball comes free. Oh, it's headed. But they're nope. going to say he's down by contact. I think they're going to call it complete pass. I think they're going to say he was getting rid of the ball as he got hit. Well, Dwight. The officials. Uh, no, they're going to give the ball to yeah. Emporia State. No, no, I take that no. back. It's a Greg, man, he gets. Fort Hayes State. Man. Yeah, the, way, the, way the listener right now is on a roller coaster ride. We got it. We don't. 
We got it. Either that or he's saying he was down. I'm hoping it looks like he's saying he was down. Yep, and you're looking at the, the first down marker there on the Fort Hayes sideline. They're, they're backing him up 70 yep. yards. And they'll put 40 seconds on the clock as Emporia State gets the quarterback sack. Looks like Trayvon Ammons. That's Trayvon huge. Trayvon Ammons. And it looked like uh, he knocked the ball free. Start that series right but there. They say he was down before the ball came free. There were a number of guys applying pressure. I think Parker Bass might have been one of them, Logan Powell. It's a great job by this morning's defense. Loss on the play of eight, making it second down on 18. The ball at the 48-21 so yard line. Well, this defense again, has answered the challenge. Just today. keep everything in front. I think we're playing we're man underneath with two high safeties. Here's the high snap to Mazzara. Has some time, sets up, throws it over the middle. Make the tackle. Tie. Making the catch, the tight end, Matt Wendelberger. Keep him in bounds. The 34 yard line. It'll bring up third down and five. So now we got four. third. Third and five. State and the Tigers will use another timeout. This is their second timeout, stopping the clock with 34 seconds to play. Or second timeout, excuse me. The second down. Oh, second down, excuse me. It'll be second down. And they need five yards for the first down. The clock has stopped with 34 seconds to go. 28-24 in Poria State. Yes, big down. They, they oh, brought the timeout. Line. They only got I one mean, left. I mean, the defensive line, uh, uh, you know, that time they only had three down line. We're playing the pass. And, uh, you know, the and again, we got to remind our guys right there, they got to score to beat us. On, on Roscoe, All right, so, size. you know, um, I would, tackle them, make them milk the, the clock. Out of pocket and, and make stuff happen uh, with his arm. Uh, you know, the Emporia State secondary, I think, has been doing a pretty good job here for the most part. D.J. Heckman is the running back. Twin receivers out to left, single receiver to the right. That's Lane Beaverly. He's had a big catch this afternoon. Looking to throw. Mazzara has some time down the sideline. The pass is going to be incomplete. Or are they going to say it's complete? They're going to say catch. it's a catch. That's a, that's a heck of a coverage. I mean, we're playing man underneath line. and two safeties over the top. I mean, we, we got what we want. We got a, we got good man coverage right there. We got a safety there. You know, guy makes a play. with 29 seconds to go. Jacob Mazzara will work out of the shotgun. Twin receivers left and right. Zara claps his hand. Across the 50. Well, there's never a time to relax in the MIAA. And I'm sure this 25 seconds is going to seem like an eternity. Kyle Rink on the coverage. They have picked on him all afternoon long. You know, he's, he's answered the call for the most part. You know, he gave up that one, I think that one big play to be relieved. But other than that, he's been, he's been playing really Yeah, I mean, well. I think. Five you know, stop with 25 seconds to play. Second and 10. Kyle, Kyle did a good job for us this game. State 48 yard line. Mazzara takes the snap, looking to throw. Half time dumps it short. Screen Five pass, good call. Hickman, Hickman running. Make the tackle. It's a great line. job by Roscoe right there. It's a great tackle. Shy of the first down. And Fort Hayes will use their final timeout, stopping the clock with 16 seconds to go. I think worthy of note here. Now they got to uh, burn their final timeout. He's down four. Um, so they can't get field goal. Uh, have to get the touchdown here, and that takes a really good weapon in Dante Brown, their field goal kicker. This is third uh, down right here. The game makes it third and one after a nine-yard run by DJ. So really Hickman. kind of based off where they're at right now, Hickman, a and they don't have any timeouts left. I mean, Florida, five, nine, we're at a two-play, you know, two-play max, maybe three. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, but, uh, Hickman's been as far as playing this out. You know, with Mazzara and a quarterback, haven't seen uh, their red shirt or freshman Cam Fuller, who got who got some drives, you know, uh, earlier in this game. Just keep everything in front and be smart, and we uh, got to tackle. He's been playing well, and yeah, he's completed 26 of 41 passes, 338 yards, two touchdowns. He's also thrown an interception. He's been sacked twice. Got an interception coming off a tip ball. That's it. Um, you may get the fans uh, up. It's up. big down. Mazzara working out of the shotgun on third down. Takes yeah, the snap, man, wants we're, to we're, throw. Has time over the middle, man, passes okay. incomplete. Not sure who he was. He was trying to hook up with Haslett, and Emporia State had him blanket covered. Great Again, individual we're playing man, two safeties over the top. We can get hurt with the quarterback so scramble, but that quarterback's not that fast. I mean, we give up 10 to 15 yards at best, you know, so now it's fourth down. This is it right here. This is the game. We get a stop here, it's over. Take a knee.
13 seconds Ring to play the, the game. Mazzara to throw, has some time. The pass is going to be caught. It'll be a good for a first down. And they get a first down. Still not over. The Life of the MIAA. Line. That'll be Man. Matt Wendelberger. He's a, he's a tight end fullback position. They've been going to him a lot. Uh, nice. He's matched up on safeties. Nine seconds to go in the game. So they either got to throw a play, catch it, get out of bounds, or, again, they got about one, maybe one play left. Mazzara working out of the shotgun. Takes the snap, play action, looking to throw. Has the time to go deep down the field. The pass scheme. is going to be incomplete. Tried to go to Harley Hanslin. Four seconds to play. It's Coach Nardo, he's getting excited down there. Great coverage there. Got some, got some communication going on in the middle of the field between Trayvon Ammons and one of their offensive Second and ten for four. So they got to put the ball in the air. Yard line. I mean, there's four, four seconds, seconds left. The this could be the final play. Mazzara making sure everybody's Back up. on the same page. Three wide Tip the ball down. Tight end to the left. High snap. Mazzara looking to throw. Steps up. Here comes the pressure. Got it. Got pressure. Got him to step up to where the stunt was coming inside. As we Jameet ran a line Murphy. stunt right there, and Jameet made the tackle, man. It's a big time play. This is a huge win for us. Like you were saying, Greg, this game was huge win. How we responded after getting embarrassed out of Maryville, Missouri, and I'd say you can't respond a whole lot better than. Oh yeah, we were embarrassed at Maryville, but we were embarrassed losing a Linda win at home. What a win for Emporia State. For our guys, you know, we're now we're setting at three and three. Now we go on a run. This is such a huge, big win for us. Credit to the group of guys we had uh, on this football team, veteran guys. You know, we had, we scored zero points first half. Didn't do anything. And and I know they got one of the top. They're they're either the best defense or top two defense in the league. And and we put 28 points on the board second half. Uh, and defensively, we made plays that we needed to, and we played outstanding uh, defensively, especially the first half. The defense kept us in it. You know, the first half for us to wake up and play better, you know. And they did some bending in this game, but they didn't break as the one at 20. Big win, man. These are definitely nail biters, and they age you. But, man, when they're over and you win, nothing feels any better, I can tell you that. Um, you got to go down to the, the end zone, tell the band, good job. They always do a great job for us. But, um, you, know, the, you know, getting the ball back and, and especially getting the turnovers in the red zone like we did and not allowing them to score was huge.